Okay. Reminders from the last session. You're going to go visit Lan for Fekin's uh, brother, Riddick. You're mm. currently trying to absolve yourselves of the ghost of Lan for Fekin's uh, Lan for Fekin whilst saving face. Uh, the people of Usk are dicks and steal our insert gender of preference here. Uh, and you are currently being hunted by the ghost of Lan for Fekin. Wow, those are, that's some prior order right there. I believe we left you halfway on the road to St. Asaph, just as night started to fall. Or, well, just as evening started to fall. Uh, uh, are you all caught up, uh, caught up at this point, Benji? Do you know what's happening? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I know what's happening. It's... <laughs> Fair, fair. We're off to see an orphan who's not an orphan. Well, I suppose he's still an orphan. He's just more so of an, a lonely orphan nowadays. He's not an orphan. Uh, I would say Next kind of level. Well, if he's their brother, then he's yeah. definitionally yeah. an orphan. Yeah, no, you're yes. right. I know these things. Orphans. I don't know. I'm familiar. I don't associate... Wait, hold on. My mum's an orphan. Yeah, I absolutely associate with orphans. I'm literally an orphan. <laughs> Why do you people forget this? <laughs> what is it with you? Oh no, but you you knew your mother. You oh knew, yes, that's you, you that's knew your mother. <laughs> you know your mother. We're like that's two true, minutes yeah. in and we just dove right off into the darkness. Yeah, but my mum <laughs> no, my mum was the orphan. She oh, never knew yeah, her father. True. She knew her mother, but she never knew her father. Knowing your parents is not not the definition of an orphan. That's also true. I don't know. There's, there's, I could potentially persuade you and to uh, back me just to say you're wrong. I like to think of myself as a fair GM. Benji, Benji is 100% correct here. And he's also had to put up with a lot of young Nicholas getting repeatedly confused over what does and does not constitute an orphan. Uh, it has at this point, point been years. So I, I, I feel, if anything, oh, inclined no. to give him some slack, I'm afraid. Sorry. I've got to do the cat's litter. Back in two. Fair. Okay, in that case, what's well, that? I can't do it. Mm. Well, I mean, three months, you can't do it? Reasonable. Uh, yes, so three. whilst the uh, old cob pops out of existence with a, a schlorp for a moment, Bert and. Oh, actually, sorry, point of order. Benji, I, something has been striking me about Idris Furch Idris's name for quite a while, and I couldn't put my finger on it until I was playing the CK the other day. Oh, uh, it's the fe- it's the feminine, isn't it? Yeah, Furch is is. Means, I can't remember the I can't remember the ma- I can't remember the masculine. Uh, app or is- Ab, but I don't know the grammar for which one it should be. But yeah, you, you are Idris, daughter of Idris. Uh, I quite like the idea, but they got it wrong. <laughs> I would just say this: Don't you fucking oppress me. No, I mean no, no, no judgment. Any That's, man, you, yeah, you you do you do what you want to do, but just just so you're aware that it's a conscious decision that you identify yourself as interest for its interest. Gender pronouns in everything. Well, that's not a pronoun. That's a uh, technically it's a matronymic in this case. Mm. I no. suppose is it a matronymic? He, no, it's a patronymic. It's a... But it's the feminine well, version I... of a patronymic. I suppose. It's a it's the matronymic because it's denoting descent from the mother. So yeah, it's a matronymic. No, but it's not yeah. denoting descent from your mother because it doesn't imply that the no, it's you daughter, the daughter of Idris. Yeah, exactly. So it's not daughter of a necessarily female Idris. Uh, that's why you don't know. Yeah, well, that's a good question. Unless we're assuming that Idris is a, a neutral name. Well, I, I quite like sure the idea that uh, Mother Idris named Idris after herself. <laughs> Uh, so she was a uh, a woman with a male name who then gave her a name to a man who associates as a woman. But he doesn't associate as a woman that we've seen. Oh, no, so well, not so far. That hasn't really come up conversation, I mean, has that it? is also very true. <laughs> I mean, I, I, nothing against whales. This, yeah, if, if you want to play a <laughs> uh, medieval Welsh trans character, more power to you. But let's let's do it sensitively if you're going to do it. Otherwise, I'm, I'm that's not gonna going to do it. I'm I'm not going to. It's okay. just literally the reason is I forgot what the fucking I forgot what the, the fucking masculine one was. Yeah, it would be it would be app or ab, but I have no. I idea I shall just that. change it on the fucking thing. Yeah, probably, I guess app. Uh, yeah, I think it's app. I mean, it's a fifty-fifty shot, right? It's got to be one or the other. Does it matter? Not especially. 
yeah, changing the cat's litter. He was just putting his hoodie on. Uh, we didn't do anything, Callum. We just identified a slight problem with Idris's name. He's been using the um, female version of a patronymic or a matronymic. Unclear whether he's named for his father or his mother. And whether or not his mother was also called Idris. One of his parents was called Idris, is all we can say for certain. Yeah, that's, that's all we've worked out so far, is that one of his parents is called Idris, and he's the daughter of Idris. No, because I've now changed it, so he is How now Idris Ab Idris. Oh, that's weird, it's not changed on my thing. Oh, maybe I need to reopen your sheet. Well, I mean, you're not supposed to capitalise the app, I don't yeah. think, but fair. Cool, so evening is falling, which means your ghostly friend is on the way. What are you planning to do? Tell us to bugger off. I mean, just going to tell the ghost to bugger off at this point when we're on the way to see uh, uh, siblingless orphan brother. Yes, your current hope is still that you can solve this ghostly problem, um, or at least... Bert's current hope is still that you can solve this ghostly problem amicably and like help her on through to the other side. Uh, Old Cobb seems to mostly be going along with this out of he doesn't want to argue and dislikes the mild threats of physical violence. But I can understand why Idris might perhaps be uh, a, a little bit annoyed that he's be feels he's been dragged into this arguably unjustly. He was a party to it. And pay his dues just like both of us. Well, for the other two of you, then, what are you, what are you doing to prepare for the evening? Uh, as your compatriot is apparently intent on enraging the spectre. Who are you talking to? <laughs> the other two of them, Whitey and uh, Callum, oh, I Old Cobb and Bert. I mean, you've made your policy clear. If the ghost turns up, you're going to call it a wanker. I'm going to call it a wanker. I'm just going to say sod off and stop bothering me, particularly. I didn't do nothing to you. <laughs> I can't tell if Caleb's yeah, mic is still fucked or if he's just not saying anything. The oh, silence of fucked, the guilty. Yeah. yeah, his mic is fucked. Oh no, he's just muted himself on Discord. Oh! oh why, is it, why was that not the first thing you could check? I did say you were muted. I didn't hear you. The oh, first thing right. I heard was you and just saying it. Oh, okay, <laughs> great. Yeah, no, I, I said like, the moment you sat down you were chatting and I was like, Caleb, you're muted. <laughs> no, I didn't hear that. Big rip. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Fine. I was saying that, you know, we'll we'll accost the ghost and say, we're getting there. Don't just hurry us along our way. So that seems to be that seems to be old Cobb's plan. A uh, slightly more polite version of the bugger off. And uh well, you, know, you gotta you gotta butter her up. She was good to me in life. Not yeah, so and you death. gruesomely murdered her. Which is why we're in this fucking problem in the first place. We're in gruesome? And, uh, uh, yeah. I mean, Bert is kind of... I mean, he's apologetic. Sorry, but he's... We've already established that Bert is the only person here who's um, uh, overtly God-fearing and certainly ap apologetic to spirits. Overtly God fearing uh, lives with the devil in his house. <laughs> look, at least, uh, look, at least I can keep an eye on him. That is a disadvantaged, uh, ambiguously potentially orphaned child who he somewhat looks after when no one else yeah. in the village will. Like, Still I'm, not the saying devil in him. I'm not saying he's a model of parental care, but it's absolutely it, like in line with the principles of how you're supposed to practice his faith. Um, yeah, no, if, if, uh, Ghosty turns up, I'm actually going to be relatively apologetic. Uh, and, but tone of voice wise is probably going to be a little bit like addressing Sinful John. I'm a little bit used to the weird stuff. So I, if I have to take a courage roll for it, whatever. But, uh, otherwise it'll be, uh, how would I address, how would I address Sinful John in this scenario? I think you left him back at the farm, if I recall correctly. Mm. No, no, I'm just, I'm, I'm just thinking in my head. Yeah, how would fair. I address Simple John if Simple John was a ghost, or if Simple John was generally being spooky? What do you mean if? Uh, when? Fine. 
<laughs> yeah, no, just Jeremy apologizing. Okay. So evening falls, and with uh, most of a day's worth of travel left to St. Asaph, or at least uh, half a day or so, the three of you begin to make camp. Did anyone bring any kind of tent or anything? Uh, uh, no. no. I don't have it in my inventory, so I don't own it. Don't think I own a tent. I Extreme, assume the other is wood. Extremely fair. Uh, but I think we can probably assume that you've all brought a blanket of some kind, so you'll be sleeping out underneath the stars this eve. It's fine. So then, for rain. <laughs> does, uh, oh, I was going to say, did you bring any food? But as I recall correctly, you actually raised a tax on the village. So you do have, we did. you do have supplies explicitly. So you settle in for a, an actually quite rich meal. There's a, a ch- most of the chicken in there, assorted root vegetables. Uh, you've got the remainder of someone's harvest of blackberries from the autumn, which are not in the best of states at this point, but they're still just about hanging on after some judicious uh, refrigeration. Uh, not refrigeration, but, you know, packing them in with the snow. Then settle in for a fairly fitful slumber. I will take. I'll take a courage check from everyone, please. Difficulty six. Um, oh, on disadvantage. Yep, and uh, old Cobb, his consciousness weighing on him only somewhat, manages to fall asleep. I have deep sleeper. I don't know if that helps me on this. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that that keeps you asleep, doesn't it? I don't think it makes you fall asleep. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. Let's have uh, a look. Oh, I didn't copy and paste the description. More That's on. fair. Where's it come from? Uh, VDA. That is a it. pass of four degrees. Nice. One sec, just seeing if I can find Whitey's merit or the floor, rather. That's a floor. Okay. Okay, so it does not aid you in falling asleep, Whitey, but it does mean that you likely won't wake up if you do manage to fall asleep. Granddaddy right. Idris, entirely convinced that he's not at all at fault here, falls asleep immediately. Four successes. Okay, I'm going to quickly go grab the uh, puppy out of the thing. Fair enough. Okay, and... That's just a courage roll, yeah? Yeah. Three successes, which means Granddaddy Idris has dropped off asleep, Old Cov Barm has dropped off asleep, and uh, Bert has thoroughly dropped off asleep. Being a deep sleeper, he will not awake until dawn. Old Cov, you awaken, eyes still closed for the moment, to a cold sensation wafting just in front of you. What do? I, uh... Pull my blanket up closer up to my neck. Your blanket seems I... to do little, even against the uh, what we in late uh, early April cold. What do I crack one eye open in front of you? Something's not right. He opens his crack in front. I of open you my crack. Is the hovering wraith of Lanfer Fecken. Her boot printed face crunched cartilage flowing out of it freely mere inches from your own she hovers silent and indistinct staring at you furiously there's no telling how long the spectre has been there I will take a somewhat more difficult courage roll this time please difficulty nine. Oh no <laughs> <Sleep away. laughs> nearby Bert is is gone Holy <laughs> fuck. <laughs> Two successes, old Cobb. You successfully hold on to your bottle. <laughs> what right. What do you fucking... Your nature is penitent, you know that, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> I just... Oh, that's good. You're the least um, penitent character. Yeah, I probably should have changed that, but hey-ho, we're going with it. Fair. I suppose these things can manifest in many different ways. Look, we'll get there when we get there. You impatient <laughs> twat. 
calling the ghost a, a twat. Good one. Her visage distorts into a wordless scream. No sound emits. But she grows slowly more and more distinct until fading away into the starlit sky. Girl didn't know she was born or dead. I think I think you can probably also Yeah, regain a point of willpower whenever you feel that you have achieved absolution for a given sin. God damn it. God damn it. The <laughs> I'm calm. I'm calm. Whenever I feel I have. <laughs> Regardless for that, I, I, I think regained a point of willpower for that encounter. Uh, that, that, that was <coughs> determined. <coughs> Facing down the specter of death and carrying on regardless. Vite, uh, the quite literal specter of death. Morning comes and the three of you arise. We got Benji back. No. Morning comes and the two of you arise as one of you pops out of existence with a schlorp. <laughs> Bert. Old Cobb looks maybe a little bit worse for wear, but uh, you slept extremely well. Always do. If you want to get any rest, you've got to be a deep sleeper around Sinful John. <laughs> that trait makes a worrying amount of sense in context, really. <laughs> yeah. Just Bert is... He, he's fit for purpose. <laughs> <laughs> Working is designed. <laughs> oh, dear. The two of you break down what passes for camp and proceed on the road to St. Asaf. The uh, the foothills around here, the foothills and the walls, are um, somewhat heavier, popula- uh, more heavily populated than uh, the little village of Mould. You can see occasional goat herders in the distance, their dogs standing vigilant as they guard the herds and wealth of the town. By midday, you come on the little fortified hillock of St. Asaf itself, positioned next to one of the only, or at least one of the best, natural beaches on the peninsula. I've returned. Sorry about that. Hey, you didn't miss too much. Uh, Night encounter and... Uh, Lanfer Fekin turned up to try to harass Old Cobb. <laughs> Old Cobb proceeded to... Having none of it. Yeah, he's just having <laughs> none of it. <laughs> Piss off, ghost. He more or less told her to calm down. Which uh, she did not, but did not do anything else. You have now arrived outside the Orwell, in, within sight of the uh, the walls of St. Asaf. It's a wooden palisade, but it's quite a firmly put together one. You can see curls of smoke lighting up, uh, like you know, coiling up into the sky from the assorted longhouses and smaller huts and things within. And even from this distance here, raucous sounds of drinking and fighting. Evidently, it must be something of a day in town. What do? Go to the, enter the town. And what is your plan when you get into town? Uh, my t- plan when I get into town is going to be asking around if anyone knows this bloke who we are looking for, whose name I totally know. Riddick the Rough. He is the local tax collector and quite a well-known figure. That's the bastard. Find yeah. the most well-dressed rube in town. Why specifically well-dressed? Wealthy. You know he doesn't get to keep the money, right? Well, he does draw a salary, so he probably technically does keep some of the money. Yeah, some of it, but it's not like he's <laughs> rolling around in a big pit full of money. I, did, I didn't necessarily mean the tax collector, but I would think that the most wealthy man in town is quite familiar with the tax collector. True. Although he's probably less wealthy now. So... Actually, doesn't the Jarl live here? The Jarl does indeed live here. So, yeah, let's not just go randomly barging into the Jarl's, the Jarl's house, being like, yo, you know where the tax collector lives? You there. Would you like to buy a share in a manor in sunny Sicily? Ah, good times. Can you have medieval time shares? Time shares? You probably could have a medieval timeshare. Like, it, it's the era of complex feudal contracts. I could see it. Yeah, the small issue of that is that how the hell do you get there? By boat. Yeah, but how do you get there on 
time for the thing. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're selling a timeshare. You're not selling a good contract. It sounds like their problem. This is why you're not cut out for selling medieval timeshares for Sicilian manors. Mm, exactly. Clearly. It's a cutthroat industry. It is. You're going to be the medieval telemarketers with the little... I was going to say a can on a string. Realized that wouldn't exist. And the next thing my brain went to was a fish on a string. I have no idea why that was the next item in the mental list. Getting into St. Asaf is a fairly easy time for the three of you. It would be an extremely difficult time for the two of you. One of you stinking of badger piss and uh, being almost entirely unclothed. And the other one just being some random nobody from a local nobody village. Fortunately, however, you are here with Bert. And Bert is somewhat known to many of the figures in town. Now, this is not really in a period where you'd have anything like guards on duty. Uh, but you've probably got someone casually watching the, uh, or more than a few people casually watching the, the main gates into town, uh, just in fear of a, a Welsh peasant revolt. <laughs> or I guess them fuckers from Usk. And uh, as a result, you're allowed in with fairly little fanfare. People assume Bert's been called in for service on something or other. Might even mean there's a new raid on the horizon. Getting directions to Riddick the Rough's dwelling is not difficult. Uh, he's not a particularly popular person, but people do know where he lives. However, getting inside is somewhat more difficult. His uh, <coughs> sleeping partner is somewhat unwilling to open the door, insisting that he's busy and you'll have to come back tomorrow. What do he's you uh... Do you, do you know if he's going to be around here tonight, if by chance? We could really do with seeing, seeing him sooner rather than later. And, you know, he's uh, we, we are three poor travellers in need of uh, a little bit of, a little bit of TL, TLC. We're, we're bringing him important family news. The, uh, the voice. He needs to, we need to see him right away. The voice from behind the door continues. Here, I'm having none of that. He's not working. And he's not going to work. Earlier, no pleading. He's got no family save myself. You all can sod off. I was under the impression he had three siblings who lived in Mould. He's got no family worth speaking of save myself. Right, well, now we, we are here to I mean, speak of them. That is entirely true. He now no longer has any family save yourself. Oh, right, yeah, just drop it straight away, why don't you? All right, I can you understand a thing through your intelligibly thick Welsh accents. You can He's come. He's Welsh too. Oh yeah, this person. Oh, I can't do a Scandi <laughs> accent unless we oh, wheel out the Ulfric Stormcloak from bloody. Ah uh, yes. It, it depends how stereotypical like we set the clock. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is I, <laughs> Riddick the Rough Sleeping Companion. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know, try Swedish Chef, that might work I can't do Swedish Chef Or well, you I mean, could the go the, the guy from Frozen The one who's trying to sell discount summer gear Yeah, that's what. That, that's basically Swedish oh, Chef, right, isn't the, it? I cannot do a Swedish accent to save my life It's alright uh, You've got to get the right fri trigger phrase yeah, for it To do a really like bad one really high, high up and down lilt like, yeah. really uh, I mean, It's alright, we're here to talk about his family there you go. This is really offensive to everyone who lives in the country with you, one. Uh, it's only Sweden. If you start so calling them Danish, with Ulfric, then no problem. Sorry. Yeah, screw it. We're going with we're going with Ulfric. I may regret this, but we're Ulfric is now the generic Norse accent. It's entering the repertoire for few. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck my life. Future uh, reference. We had this as the. It wasn't. It was Ulfric's accent for Cartball Mighty, but it was also the accent of everyone from East March. So even the children Boys were ruined. <laughs> <laughs> it was when I, I had to I alternate. When I had to, because there's the fucking Grey Quarter in in uh, Windhelm, so I had to alternate between Morrowind Dunmer sixty a day cigarette voice and fucking Ulfric Stormcloak. I just gargled some gravel, and a bit of it got stuck. Oh dear. It's fine. Like I, my my uh, Elder Scrolls lore is 
not that deep, so you go for it. I don't know if it's Elder Scrolls lore. Yeah, I don't think that was it. <laughs> There's a deep <laughs> lore here. The deepest lore of, Ulfric, of freaking Ulfric Stormcloak. He sounds like he's gargling rocks. He does sound like he's gargling rocks, to be fair. He does. Look, I tell you what, we'll, we'll... I'm not suggesting he doesn't sound like he's gargling rocks. What I'm suggesting is that's not chief on the first thing that comes up on his fucking UESP. We're gonna, we're gonna sunset. It, we're gonna sunset invasion this beach halfway through this campaign. The Dunmer will invade medieval Wales, and and it'll be jokes. Bone yeah, but that will just be that will be confusing because we'll both be screaming Outlander at each other in varying accents. It sounds better. Uh, you know what? Pace. Let's do pace. <coughs> So yes, the uh, extremely nordically voiced uh, man behind the door. I have no intention of seeing you today. I right. He has no intention of seeing you today. Sod off right. till tomorrow. Quite frankly, mate, we need to deliver this urgent news to you. We've been entrusted to do so by the local constabulary. Well, power structure rather than constabulary. We don't have such things, and we need to see you today. Him. The uh, the door slides open, and an incredibly heavy set Nordic man with a colossal ginger beard looms out at you. I said, "We are not taking visitors today." And I told you, Sonny Jim, that we're not visitors; we're messengers, important ones. Roll athletics dexterity to dodge. <laughs> As a gotcha. colossal meaty fist hurtles for your face. I thought Bert was really zany. I would like to spend and... a willpower to get an automatic success. <laughs> that is an extremely <laughs> wise move, yes. <laughs> I don't yeah, know. I, yeah. just, but, did you say what? athletics? Uh, yeah, I think it's athletics dexterity to dodge. Sorry, what were you saying? What? Was just, yeah, was uh, saying, when... get on my level, Nordic man. <laughs> When I first rolled Bert, I thought, ha ha ha, look at how zany he is. Did and now s- I've, I see him as the straight man of the group. Did, did, you, say, did you say difficulty six or difficulty seven? I mean, we do. It, it, uh, dodge is by default a combat rule, I would say, so diff six. <laughs> then that is one, two, three, four, five, six degrees of success. Six degrees of success. <laughs> so under Just it. matrix roll backwards. You, you have had many a sucker punch thrown your way in your time as local <laughs> badger piss pagan. And you recognize the specific muscle tensions involved. You skitter backwards like an athletic beetle, dodging effortlessly out of the way of the swing so hard that old Cobb behind you is almost hit instead and has to kind of jerk backwards. The Nord does not move from the door, instead making an obscene gesture and slamming it shut. And so I don't know, kids these days... He was, at best, a third your age, certainly. Wait, no, that can't be true. I was picturing him as, like, early 30s. That would make you, like, 90. I can <laughs> 90 believe 90-year-old just dodging, casually dodging fucking punches like that. It would be good. All right, well, I guess we, we better go find a suit of Elena or something. Or, or a welcoming bed for a cheap to know money. Real- the real question is, why is he being so insistent that this guy's not seeing visitors at all? This is just kind of weird. I don't know. Could be some sort of Uskian plague. I don't see what I mean, I suppose it could be a plague from Usk, but uh, would have had to come through mold first if we'd have known about it. Uh, well, something very was- strange did come through through our town, like, yesterday. Yeah. So, you know... <laughs> That was that was a month ago. I'm not sure was the ghost. Ago. Well, yeah, the ghost is also very very strange. I mean, the ghost is definitely very strange. Both both are very strange. But the dragon was a month ago. Remember, it's it's early April now, and it's it was the first of March last time. You had a downtime. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. What do? We'll go and find somewhere to bed down for the night. If he's not say if he's taking visitors tomorrow. As it is implied, and there's no point hassling the poor man or his. Uh, and where are we going to stay, friend. and what with what money? Look, I'm sure that there are some good folk around here in Moose characters. No, 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 no. Saint Apath. 
No, 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 no. We've already seen what, what? that gets us. We get us what? a fucking what? ghost what? What? on us. What do you mean, no? I ain't gonna die from one night. We'll die after the other a few ones. Years, the other maybe. ones did. What? I, I don't know what you're trying to imply. Well, it was one very specific night they died from, but still, right. one night. Right, okay. You go and do your own <laughs> fancy non illicit bedding right. down. Right, and I'll I will. go and do my I'll go and do my own <sighs> way. The cob way. So Saint Asaph does not actually feature a tavern. It does have the town hall, which is basically a large longhouse that the Yarl and his uh, assorted cronies gather and drink in. Um, and Bert would have gotten drunk there at least a few times, so would know that it is not necessarily out of question to be allowed to just pass out in the corner. Uh, though they would probably take a dim view of the one of you who smells like badger piss. Otherwise, you might be able to pay someone to stay in their hut, or convince them to let you stay there for free, uh, though you do have the rest of the day to play with as well. Uh, or, in a pinch, you could maybe argue to let the local priest let you crash in the church. That said, there is one major issue with the priest of St. Asaph, which Bert would be extremely aware of, which is that he is from Usk. What a bastard. You know, tells you. Well, no shit, we're not- Musk. We're not doing that. The ironically named Nyal the Noxious. Noxious oh. on account of all that fucking soap. <laughs> Just wafting off him. <laughs> he stinks too clean. Clean. It's a stinks misnomer, too. I tell us, yeah. It's Does like it little John. Nothing wrong with, a good, of, wrong with a good bit of soap. Lord Brocktree loves the stuff. In the yeah, distance, he eats five bars a day. So, what are we doing? I'm going to, regardless of my opinion of uh, people from Musk, he is a member of the clergy, and I do I would trust him as a result. So I'm going to uh, attempt to sleep on hallowed ground. Okay. You, uh... I'm repenting my sins after all. I, I apologize to that ghost, and I intend to make good. Therefore, I'm going to stay at the church, knowing that as a repentant uh, member of the public, you make your way with the uh, your two bickering fellows in tow to the simple wooden chapel that forms the eponymous core of St. Asaph. <laughs> Nial the Noxious is uh, actually tending the altar when you come in uh, and turns to greet you with a broad smile. Ah, fuck, I just established the accent. God damn it. Instant regret. Ah. Uh. Brother Bert, it has been so long since I have seen you here. Uh, I kind of tilt my head back and sniff and say, uh, yes, I, uh, didn't come bear in stock this time. Uh, come on sad news and, uh, I'm looking for a place to stay. You may not be my, uh, favorite member of the clergy, but you're a nice enough fellow. And uh, I just uh, humbly ask that you put me and uh, my traveling companions up for a night, if at all possible. He uh, strides forwards to enclose you in a uh, mighty bear hug. Rather tall and leanly muscled man in his cassock, but pauses at the last moment as he approaches within smell range of the thankfully downwind Granddaddy Idris. Hello there. Dear God in heaven, I would be more than happy to let the three of you stay, but you need a bath. <laughs> Mate, there's, there's no need for that. He, uh, hold on, hold on, let it, let's hear him out at least. How long has it been, Idris? <laughs> yeah, you can tell us you're in good company. <laughs> Mate, I live in a, in a hole in place. the woods. A wonderfully well-appointed hole in the woods, but a hole in the woods nonetheless. What makes you think I've got time or oh, no. place so We're talking about? years, not Now, I will year, say right? that Lord Brotry would very much... Lord, Lord Brotry right here would like to... Uh, you no, have to <laughs> stares an empty spot on ground. <laughs> yeah, you, you, <laughs> if you recall correctly, you left Lord Brotry to uh, guard the warren last time. 
You've got, Wait, you told yeah. him to find his own way home and guard the war. And it uh, brought no, Tree we, over. We, oh, right, yeah. Because <laughs> we established he knew his way <laughs> yeah, home. I was that was say. We did establish that he, he he's definitely not gotten lost on the way back to the Badger Warren. Uh, I was going to say, I can, Lord Proctory would very much appreciate a bath. He's a good badger. The, uh, the Oscar looks at you. Do you often see badgers where there are none? There is always badgers, mate. He treats gestures, them like spiders. Gestures. He says that you're always within meters of them. He gestures around himself. My friend, there are no badgers here. Come with me down to the beach. We shall get you clean. I, I while really while you're doing that, am I alright to uh, head inside and uh, you know find a suitable place to stay? Mate, I'll just sleep in the I'll just sleep in the courtyard outside. I can make myself a nice little uh, shelter. The uh, the priest smiles at the two of you warmly and explains that. Sadly, this little room you're in, this little chapel, is is basically it. You're more than welcome to kip in here, but they've only got the pews. Outside this is the street outside the church, and inside this room is the church. Well, I I guess we could pull a few pews together. Um, Have you, uh... Pew, you you don't need to pull a few together, you can sleep on the one. They're quite long. Right, you can sleep on the one. I am looking for comfort. Um, I'm used to a little bit more than just your basic one pew room. He, uh, he's th- the priest scratches his chin. I have some reasonably fresh pig fur blankets. As a, uh, as an aside, priest me old macaroni meat, um, are you not weirded out by the fact that there is a, that you, this, uh, what was the, what was the guy who came here to see his name again? Riddick the... Riddick the Rough. That's the one. Are you not weirded out by the fact that he's got a companion who has apparently become family to him, who is, you know, a gigantic, heavily bearded Nord? And by Nord, I mean Northman. Greek beyond sir, the North Seas. Nord, Nord is actually, fun fact for you, Nord is actually a somewhat historically appropriate term, whereas Norse is from the 1800s. <laughs> and Northman, either way, is, is as appropriate in either case, because that's, that's all Nord means. Hmm. Yeah, I know, right? I felt so betrayed finding that out. Uh, <clears throat> the uh, the priest looks at you long and hard. I am perhaps not totally comfortable with it, but it is of little note compared to the violence and mayhem that some of these... He shrugs his shoulders that almost all of the locals get up to. I mean, right. Thou shalt not kill is first on the list. <laughs> is it now? I mean, kind of raise an eyebrow at uh, <clears throat> as before we both slowly uh, turn Cop. our head to look at old Cop. The uh, the oh. priest nods, completely not processing any of this. Murder is the direst of mortal sins. I thought that was pride. He shrugs. I am no, perhaps not as widely point. read as I would like to be, but... I, su- I suppose it depends on the Bible. You must have a uh, one of these later versions. He, uh, he nods. Ah, uh, one of the latest 10th century Bibles. Part of the presses. If we oh, have presses. One of the ones we can't freaking read, because it's all in Latin. Not that we could read it if it was in Welsh anyway, because we can't yeah. read. He raises his eyebrow. Or well, a single eyebrow. Not that he has... A, but yeah, screw it. Fuck it. Why not? Noted handsome man with monobrow. <laughs> <coughs> he raises his singular eyebrow. I can't read the Latin. Yes. Good for you. We can't. <laughs> you are not intended to. <laughs> You're more right than you know on that one. So, uh, you keep anything in, in store? Any, uh, any decent grub? I can perhaps We are a charity case. I can perhaps spare a few rations. Come with me down to the beach. He, uh, he seems pretty insistent on getting your friend washed up first. 
I, I'm all right. I, like I said, I'll sleep outside. I'm afraid. Just, I, I don't think you should turn up uh, basic hospitality. I'm going to have to make it a condition. I, that stench, I will not be able to get it out once it soaks into the wood, inside or out. Look, Idris, we got mate, a good thing going here. Look, look mate, it's, you don't it's kind of integral to my job. It's kind of integral to my job. I mean, you can muck yourself up on the way back. No, I don't no, I think won't, Lord Briar right. Dree will be. Uh, if I don't smell right, they up. won't let me back in the set. I mean, it might do you a good a good job. Get away for a while. Look, oh, I'm uh, I'm afraid it, it, the priest seems pretty pretty hard set on this. So unless you want to try to negotiate via roll. A bath for the piss-stinking uh, piss badger druid is a prerequisite. Uh, I'm going to try and convince him that I'm a lost cause anyway, so you might as well just let me go on with it. That's probably going to be quite a difficult take for the uh, <coughs> missionary priest. What have we got here? I will take Charisma etiquette difficulty eight. I haven't got any. I haven't got any etiquette. <laughs> we noticed. <laughs> I still got a success. Single success. The uh, the priest begrudgingly agrees to allow you to sleep outside, but he's he's very clearly not happy about it, and. Uh, yeah, he's he's clearly not happy about it, and says you can you can find some some grub somewhere else in town. But does seem a, a little bit put off at your rudeness, but can't turn you down when you are in need, even if he doesn't agree with the idea of being a lost cause. So you have sorted your quarters. Excellent, excellent. What do on the food front, or indeed the anything else in town front? Well, he was he was going to give us some of his rations, wasn't he? He was, but those seem to have mysteriously run out when uh, Granddaddy Idris successfully negotiated being allowed to just sleep outside the church. Ah, right. Well, uh, there was always those uh, those goat herders. We could probably go out, and they they might spare us. Some uh, mutton, maybe okay. they might. They might have a, a lame sheep, or you know, if they if they don't have one, we could probably come up with one. Is it mutton if it comes from a goat? Well, I don't know. No, it's goat meat. Yeah. They might have a lame goat, or we could make one. Uh, it's it's probably going to be quite expensive to get goat meat for the record. Uh, uh, goat meat is called uh, mutton in India. Okay. So, well, all right then. We can, we can. I don't know. Find some sort of farmer, vegetable man. Yeah, you can probably find a farmer or something. I suppose uh, it's got to be. Oh, are you survival to scavenge oh. for a? Uh, Hold on. As a, as, a, as a fellow farmer, would I have a contact in town potentially? You might conceivably know someone in town, actually. Bert might be able to call in some minor favours to get your uh, uh, hot meal for the evening sorted. Uh, I'll take... I'll take Charisma Empathy from Bert, please. Diff 7. Can I use Survival to try and scavenge myself a meal? Or in town? Just go bag. <laughs> I mean... Waste not, want not. Yeah, but it's a much less, like bins behind the supermarket filled with food type of a culture at this point, I'm afraid. I'm, I'm, I'm aware. Uh, it's one success. I mean, it, it, it's a bit tenuous, but it seems like Bert's got a line on something he can sort you anyway, I think. Mm. Uh, I mean, you can give it a go if you want to do uh, insist on the survival. Let's have a look at your sheet. Can I roll perception survival? <laughs> you're not going to get perception survival on this one, I'm afraid, because you're basically going to have to swipe something. Uh, I think this is going to be deck survival diff 8. 
Unless he's trying to eat rats. Which way he's got to I spot mean, him first. That would still be deck survival, I think. Yeah, possibly. Simple that failure. It's indeed a simple failure. No, you. Uh... <laughs> Can I just make it so that I keep picking something up and tripping, and it falls into the path of a cart and gets run over into the mud? It's not that. It's not that big a town. <laughs> you uh, you almost get away with a few food items at various points, but instead spend most of the day on your beetle-like escapades, careening around the town, avoiding getting punched or imprisoned for anything, but. Nevertheless, making a determined nuisance of yourself, you uh, you manage to secure a basic meal of a single hunk of stale bread that fills up your old man's stomach for the evening. But that's that's about it. Mm-hmm. Whereas uh, Bert and uh, Old Cobb <coughs> spend their day reminiscing with one of Bert's old raiding friends, and and. Uh, then join them in the afternoon slash evening for a, a somewhat moochy meal, but presumably playing it reasonably politely and nicely and eating his fill. Whereas old Cobb, I'm just going to go out on the limb here and suggest probably grabs everything and anything he can possibly get his hands on. He's got a few extra pockets, as old Cobb. Goes for seconds and thirds and the that shiny, continues. shiny. When do love spoons start? You. I suppose you don't have leisure domain, do you? So you're not literally stealing the No, 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 no. I don't steal. I will, I, I will give continue. Me I will continue paying this off. I, I'll be like relatively apologetic to whoever our host is, and uh, I. The way I was picturing this is to get the meal. I was like, "Oh, remember I did you that favor? I gave you a discount when you were short. Can you just give us a hand for the night?" And then by the end of the meal, I was like, "All right, I'll." I'll I'll give you some more. I'll give it to you cheap again next time. <laughs> yeah, you, you came in here in credit in the favours and you left very firmly in debit in the favours. And yeah, uh, yeah. you know damn straight exactly who is to blame for that. Shaking a shaking a spoon from the corner. You know, there's some good folk around here, some real good folk. He says Unfortunately, he's not open, one of them. Open your door and you know, you wouldn't want to kick out a, a kind and and generous old man. <laughs> For a given definition of generous. Generous, I say. Generous in the number of words. Generous views. Generous in my company. <laughs> okay. Evening arrives, and after a fairly uneventful day of basically just sequ- securing quarters and lodging. Uh, the the three of you go to uh, go to bed quite early, I suppose. Really, <laughs> ready to get a nice, bright, and early start the next day. Sleeping in the church is actually relatively peaceful. It perhaps takes the two of you inside a while to drop off, uh, but you do eventually. And obviously, once he's gone, Bert is gone. Whereas even Old Cobb uh, finds himself entirely unharassed for the first time since leaving the fortified Badger Warren. <clears throat> I suppose it's only been a day at this point. <clears throat> Granddaddy Idris, you have to deal with entirely more pedestrian worries outside. Namely, you're sleeping outside the church in the street. And there are just so many loud Norsemen out there. I will take... God, what is a good role for getting to sleep even surrounded by angry horse? Awareness? No, you'd want to fail that. Yeah, exactly. Mm. I guess stamina for the stubbornness. And... Mm. I will take... And a shelf? No, not Seneschal. I'll take stamina, self-control, difficulty, difficulty eight, please, Benji, to manage to drop off. Okay. Good. Uh, that is two successes. Yeah, you've slept in worse conditions than this, especially since, uh, is your set ancestral or did you construct it yourself? Uh, I'm going to say ancestral, but uh... Fair. So yeah, you've you've occasionally slept in worse situations than this. You've done some traveling in your time. You know the situation. Uh, at least you're in no real danger as a beggar-looking character outside the church, or you shouldn't be. 
And you pass into slumber, annoyed but uneventfully. The two characters inside the church, if you were missing any willpower, you may recoup a dot, a dot, a, yeah, a dot, for a, a temporary dot each for a night of restful sleep. It's decidedly less restful for uh, Granddaddy Idris, but it's still basically fine. So, no willpower for you, Benji. No, it's fine. Morning comes, and the three of you arise bright and early, and head on over, presumably, to Riddick's house, where a rather sleepy character opens the door. Riddick the Rough does not look really anything like his siblings, uh, and does not seem to recognize any of you at first, looking entirely sleepy, uh, and... God, should he speak with a mix of the Nordic and terrible West Country accent? Good luck. I don't know if I can do it. Does I redirect the Ralph? No, I can't do it. Not for the life of me. Um, <laughs> it sounds like Ulfric having a stroke. <laughs> That's just my ambient Ulfric impression, surely. <clears throat> yes. So, the uh, the man who opens the door is distinctly not the uh, extremely colossal ginger giant you met yesterday. Uh, it is the familiar form of Riddick the Rough. His matted hair, brown and tussly, his eyes filled with sleep, and his demeanor indicating someone who is really just not in the mood for whatever you have, but open the door more out of habit. Uh, I'm telling you this right now. If you've come to plead to have a stay on your taxes, waking me up at the crack of dawn was not a firm start to your negotiations. Well, actually, no, I've, uh, I haven't paid. I mean, we've been, we've been looking for uh, a man called Riddick the Rough. That, uh, that be yourself? He flecks a gobbit of sleep the size of a tiny pebble out of his eye. I, I'm Riddick the Rough. Spits on the floor. Not a big fan of the appellation, but can't say it doesn't fit. Oh, I, uh, I don't think anyone here would disagree. Um, say, you, uh, we, we travelled a long way to come and, and see you. My lad, it's not, it's not about the, the taxes or anything, although, you know, I, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't mind a, a stay, but, um, it's, it's actually a bit of bad news. We're, we're here about your, your siblings, you see. Uh, he left and, they got a fucking scree. Uh, uh, and land for fucking. Yeah. I've, I've got Hethin, Gethin, and land for fucking. Aye, those are the ones. You might not know this, but I'm, uh, old, old car barm's the name. I'm what you might call their, uh, he their. rears up at that. Blinking his eyes, sleep falling away. I recognize you. You're the fucker that squatted my house. You what? You have not seen. <laughs> Have I met this guy before? You definitely have, because he, he's the estranged brother of the triplets. Uh, so you mostly would have seen him when he's a child. I, I suppose I would say generally that you should have seen the tax collector somewhat regularly, right? But if anyone in the village <laughs> is going to have run screaming for the hills whenever they hear the tax collector's in town. I should so, have. I should have. Stood arms crossed directly behind you to prevent <laughs> retreat. <laughs> <laughs> I just nudge him and say, "You're here to pay your dues now, boy." You're <laughs> you're looking at you looking mighty mighty in, in a fright, old son. Is it, is it someone I I said? Yeah, I remember you moved into the family house shortly before the parents died. Wasn't that mighty suspicious? Now, I don't know what you're insinuating there. I'm what you might have called a good Samaritan. A, a legal guardian, you might say. And the law might say as well. You just might. 
So, I've travelled here a long way, out of the goodness of my heart and the terror in my soul. Uh, slowly talk to you. Little, little ready, is it? I want this bloke to like us. I'll take Riddick, not this little Riddy. I've not been called little Riddy since I was a child. Yeah, see, I, I recognise you now. I, I didn't mean to cause offence. It's, it's just, it's swing, swing little Riddy who used to, used to play with his toys, and I used to, you know, his, his toy like his carrots and his, and his turnips, and. You leave and, my and, turnips I, out of this, you <laughs> son of a bitch. Well, no, no, see, we used to, don't you remember? We used to play, you know, hide the turnip, and I'd take the turnip, and I'd put it in his shoe, and I'd eat the turnip. And what laughs we'd have? I remember you eating my turnips. I don't forgive you eating my turnips. When you're growing up a poor child in a town named for its unique stench, you've got fairly little in this life. So to have a local freeloading moocher wander in, steal what limited toys you have, and then eat them. Oh, such strong words. I'm a pillar of the community in mould. Uh, I, what's I, left of it? You're a pillar of the cess in mould. Spit it out, what are you here for? Alright, so, your, your brother, your brother, and your sister might have come to an unfortunate end at the claws of a dragon. His eyes narrow. Ain't no such thing as dragons. What happened to my family? I produce one of the uh, teeth I took from the uh, dragon's mouth. Say, you'd be surprised. He looks at. Yeah, this looks like it's come from a deer. Big fucking deer, but still. I don't know if you've seen. What many kind of deer have you got over here, mate? <laughs> Yeah, herbivores don't have teeth like that, my friend. Uh, and you'll certainly recall, not on that pale. If you'll recall session oh, one. Oh, it was, yeah, was, was herbiv- uh, herbivores' teeth. Oh, yeah, good point. But even then, it would have been st- still way bigger than that. We don't I, have anything I mean, that sort of size in Wales, usually. Yeah, I, I grew up in the house next to yours, actually, if I'm remembering your face correctly. You Bert, pig swilling bastard. <laughs> Not sure where the you had to bring pigs from, into but... this. His eyes narrow on the priest, uh, on the priest, on the druid, and that would make you old shitty leg of the woods. Not sure where this name calling coming from. No, I don't. Wait, what well, did I? What did I fucking do? All I did was live in the woods. Uh, what you did, if you'll recall, is have t- uh, crippling irritable bowel syndrome. Oh, that's true. Oh what? yeah, there is that. When, when did I have that? We established last session that you actually had IBS. <laughs> did so, we? When When was this? Oh, God, what was it? I can't remember how we got on the topic. Oh, it was, I think fine. it was that you couldn't eat pork. Uh, no, I had to supply you all your pork because you couldn't eat anything else because it gave you crippling IBS. I don't remember this. It was It was basically there was you could only eat one type of meat or some shit. Um... Because, it, yeah, you had crippling IBS and everything else that turned your stomach. Um, Not on the and, deep law. We'll, yeah, it was deep We'll get law. it on the session. It, it's mm. it's on one of the recordings, I'm, I'm sure. Is. Yeah. Mm. It's on the YouTube, so you could listen back now. <laughs> oh, is it already on the YouTube? Yeah. Well, anyway, old shitty leg. Well, at least to the cruel-minded children of the village. Doesn't necessarily mean that his name is old shitty leg, but he's a local strange person living in rural place. Getting I a terrible understand name it. is, yeah, kind of, kind of yeah. part and parcel. Yeah, it is. Yeah. But also, how old is this guy now? He's like 20s, right? He's rough. Yeah, he'd, he'd be around, uh, probably around Bert's age, it sounds like. Oh, so actually, I would have grown up with him rather than. So he would actually have less beef with me than the other two. Or more beef. Or more beef. Yeah, I remember, no. remember, you're the rich kid next door. So I don't know if Eddie's got any more beef with us than Callum in any sense, just because, you know, Callum is the freeloading bastard who, from his accounts, killed his family. Yeah, the... so far has also angled him towards actually being quite a nice guy. Like, he may be a rich kid next door, but he's already proven to have given out 
cheap meat or as a favor to uh, people in St. Asaph. So He's actually okay with the priest who smells nice, even though he hates people from us for yes. the exact same reasons. But you're arguably the almost terminally annoying nice guy in that you're oh, okay. generally quite a decent person. But he also really doesn't like. You can't even be enough of a bastard for him to hate. Exactly. You've got to take that away from him as well. Unlike almost everyone else in the village as well, he has significantly less sway over you because you're actually worth something to the Jarl on a personal level, as you're quite a decent archer. So he can, which is presumably part of the reason. Pig farmer. Sorry. I'm quite a decent pig farmer. Yeah. So you actually have like valuable services to the Jarl, so he can't be as much of a dick to you, which means he's probably, ironically, more of a dick to you. Whereas everyone else in town, he can quite easily shake down. Apart from old shitty leg of the woods, who doesn't pay rent because he's squatting, uh, and old Cobb, who has apparently never paid taxes ever because he runs. Doesn't believe in them. Yeah, he doesn't <laughs> agree with taxes on a moral <laughs> standpoint unless they're paid to him. <clears throat> the your man there, Riddick the Rough, was uh, criticizing the the dragon's tooth, suggesting that it perhaps came from a colossal deer instead. Uh, I don't really know how to respond to that. But uh, uh, again, what size of deer as you have around here it must be fucking colossal. He shrugs his shoulders. So it was a big deer. Well, no, it was a dragon, but, you know. I'm no animalist, but even I can tell you dragons don't exist. Right, well, That's dragon, what they want you to think. Dragon, deer, hoof, face. Put two and two together and you... We're here to give our condolences and also asking for your help. So you're telling me that my entire family has been wiped out by a marauding giant deer. Well, your entire remaining family, your parents died long ago in the mysterious <laughs> circumstances. His eyes now. Oi, that, that seems Oi. like the perfect time to bring that up. Mysterious. Shol- uh, he folds his, folds his arms. So I suppose you're here to tell me I need to come round and take care of their estate. No, 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 no. No, I'm, I'm doing that perfectly well enough myself, you see. Mm, uh, surprised. No, actually, I'm, I'm here. We're here looking for some help with a, a pesky old ghost. He sort of rears back. A ghost. Hi. It's uh, it's actually your dear sister. She's been annoying the piss out of us. <laughs> His eyes blink rapidly. You know, Cobb, you really are the worst at this sort of thing, aren't you? Cobb has no empathy. He has zero, literally oh, I, zero I, empathy. I don't expect you to give a shit about it. I'm just saying you're terrible. <laughs> I'm going to interject at this point and say uh, we were there with uh, Heffen, Geffen, and Lanfrafecken when they bravely went to fight the uh, the dragon or giant deer, as you choose to believe. Um, and <laughs> I feel it is weighing on our consciences, conscious consciences? Consciences, uh, that we did not do enough to uh, to make sure that they survived that engagement. You took my baby sister and my baby brothers out to. We fight. didn't take them anywhere. They they volunteered to help rid the town of a mate, 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 dangerous mate. animal. They practically jumped the chance, mate. I will take a charisma empathy from Bert, please. Difficulty seven. Uh, I'm also going to spend a willpower for this one. That's fair. So it's one, minus one, uh, one, zero, and then plus one for the willpower, net one. <laughs> for a long time, Riddick eyes Bert. Pupils slowly narrowing, breathing, growing tense, until his muscles slack off. Hey, oh, damned silly fools. I always knew they'd get themselves killed doing something idiotic. I had hoped it might be in their old age. We never saw eye to eye, but I, uh, I didn't want this for them. So you say my sister's unquiet spirit has been coming back to haunt. Do we have any idea why? 
beats me. There I are theories, she might but nothing concrete as of yet. I suppose she might have been under the mistaken assumption that I might have had something to do with her death. I'd like you to dissuade her of that notion. <laughs> is that, sorry, does that, is that so anyone else has the worst possible fucking thing to say in yeah. the current scenario? <laughs> A lack of empathy really going forth to bite you there, Gavin. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, like, uh, there's white lie and glossing the truth really... He- like, I put uh, a fucking lacquer on there for you. Like, and then you just went like, I might have had something to do with an F. It'll, it'll, it'll <laughs> work out in the end. It's fine. Expression <laughs> charisma difficulty 10, please, Callum. Ooh, okay. That was the fucking ballsiest sentence of the campaign so far. Just for how ballsy that was, I am not going to spend a willpower. You yeah, watch go me. for it. Oh, yes. what a nine, two. So close and yet so far. Oh, was that a ten? Yeah. Oh, shit, I should have rolled <laughs> Will Power. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Sorry, was that a ten? Says the man. <laughs> Insulting. <laughs> That's the thing. I, I put Will Power on because I was like, yeah, I've got six dice, but I'm not going to fucking chance this. Oh, I put then. Ten. Oh well, Dex, I'll roll with it. Dex Athletics Div Six, please, Callum, to dodge. Okay. Botch it, botch it. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> there we go, boys. <laughs> oh no! Thus died old cop. Mid sentence. Oh, to the Dipping end. Teeth. He's actually got nine lives. Is the worst. But how does that actually work? Let me take a, a speedy look. Like. You know that you know that uh, clip of The Simpsons where Homer's got his like backwards springs on his shoes and he keeps getting punched in the face and going back out. That's called nine lives. <laughs> <coughs> well, didn't we play off Cam's uh, nine lives with basically that each of his personas were just different, different Count Olafs? They'll be coming back in new disguise. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the broken notes. <laughs> Cool. Ah, okay. So. Immediately and terrifyingly enraged, Riddick the Rough, worthy of his name, surges forwards, one hand gripping your neck, the other hand gripping your head, and the two pulling firmly in opposite directions. Roll me stamina diff 8 to avoid a grisly death. Jesus. I mean, oh Jesus, no! That is a simple failure. You, uh, That's all right, I got nine lives. Per the perk of your nine lives, which I have just read, so you have nine uh, lives to expend. When a roll would result in your death, immediately re roll it. If the roll succeeds, you walk away from the lethal incident alive but down one life. You may re roll such near fatal rolls up to nine times. So. You get to. You basically have re rolls on fatal stuff, but each failed roll does count for a life. All right, let's do that again. This is one hell of a way to defeat the ghost. Allow the brother to get exact revenge. <laughs> <laughs> the other two look at each other. Job done. Job done. Oh, that works. So, yeah, I guess. You Attempt were... number two. That is, a sim- <laughs> that is a simple <laughs> failure. Is this going to keep happening until he fucking passed? Attempt number three. <laughs> <laughs> is this a ten that he needs to get? <coughs> no, he only needs to get eight. But he keeps getting he keeps getting one success and one one. So it, the one cancels out the success, making it a simple failure. Just like just <laughs> the head, like you can see his neck extending. <laughs> Attempt number four. Oh, watch it again. Oh, oh simple success. A simple failure, failure rather. How That's many simple. lives is he down to now? Four of his points out of nine. <laughs> so, oh, sorry, he's four. spent four. He's down to five. He's spent four, yeah. Attempt number five. Yay! Hey! <laughs> Just. He really wanted to kill you there. <laughs> so he pulls, 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 pulls. There's screams breaking, or a singular strangulated scream breaking out through the early morning light. So until well, so finding your neck unusually tough, 
Riddick simply twists your head sharply to the side and hurls you bodily across the street into a pile of dung. Murderous scum. He rounds on the other two of you, convinced that uh, Old Cobb is dead, as Old Cobb is in fact lying down with one hell of a neck crick and presumably some minor permanent spinal damage, ensconced in dung. (laughs) And the two of you... What do you have to say for yourselves before you meet his fate? Oh, well, two points. One, it wasn't fecking us. And two, bring it on, Sonny Jim. I'll fucking have you. I just take a step back and say, if he was to challenge you, by all means. <laughs> There's no love lost in this trio. <laughs> this one tax collector proceeds to wreck the party. <laughs> Single handedly. I'll have my say when you're done with him. He's he's just found out his family's dead. He's just found out that this guy who he clearly hates murdered them. He's got a lot of emotions boiled up, and you say, I'll fucking have you. Immediately. <laughs> different first. You did. And then it, and it was even quite like a, a reasonable defense to maybe calm him down. You don't want to murder people by and large. But you then immediately after going, well it wasn't us launched into but I will fight you, you nerd. Free <laughs> 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 on and respect your elders, you little shit. It was like, oh really sorry, it was not our fault your family's dead, kick sand in the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. He rushes forwards, grabbing the knife from his waist as he goes. You do, do not have nine lives. What do you, Benji? Right, what am I armed with, if anything? Uh, what are you armed with? I think you've got a stick. <laughs> I've got melee dark ages at four points. Let's fucking do this. Oh my god. So the fail faster squad <laughs> fails faster. This is not how I expected it to go. Uh, Alright, fair. I, I, I will say you're very aware that attacking the Jarl's tax collector is one way or another a death sentence. He attacked me first. That is, that does not change it. Yeah, no. But the classic Benji, I consider myself to be in the right, therefore all other characters must consider me to be in the right. Let's do it. All right. I've got wi- I've got witnesses. What you've got? I'm certainly going to witness something. A single witness who may or may not be on your side. Still more than he's got. <coughs> <coughs> Meanwhile, old. Oh, you, oh, actually, no. You are my witness. Fucking, you just said we had that. nothing to do with it. You just already corroborated my story. <laughs> God damn it! Uh, sorry. What was that from Old Cobb? <laughs> I said old, old cops stripy stockings roll up Wicked Witch of the East style <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear uh, Cool so you're gonna you're gonna actually fight him Okay I don't want to do like full combat combat for this but fuck it why not we'll do we'll do something nice and simplified uh, <sighs> Christ I need actual bloody stats for this guy now Just one ah. second whilst I look in the book I see you're not preemptively making the mistake like I do of statting things before they're, uh, they're, they enter combat. No, I actually... So I did the... You know when the, the meme about... Uh, I say the meme. The child abuse where you find your kids smoking a cigarette so you make them smoke like a whole carton of cigarettes to get yeah, them yeah. to stop. So you remember our very first pen and paper where I tried to do Morrowind? Like, I also tried to give pen and paper stats to every individual NPC within Morrowind and permanently burnt myself out on statting characters, which in the long run has worked out really well for me in terms of actual investment. But, uh, but yeah. Okay, let's have a look. We probably want a soldier character here. Da-da-da. Cool, that will do. All right, Benji, give me... You know what, we won't do initiative, we'll let you go first as you're on the defensive. <coughs> what do? Do you just want to, like, twat at each other we'll see who's who's alive at the end? I wasn't going to kill him or anything, I was just going to knock, you know, knock him down a bit if he tried to stab me. He is in a homicidal rage right now. Either you kill him or you run away. 
or he kills you. Is sorry, three options. I, unless you have a magic, I'm forgetting about. Is the I suppose the hypothetical fourth. He's not a bad. Uh, no, the so. only magic. The only magic I have is animals. <laughs> Yeah, he's he's not an animal that you can carve. Right, I'm I'm not going to aim to kill him, but okay. Uh, okay, well in that case, uh, Dex melee, and we'll just do like a super simplified combat session. Okay, that is one minus one zero one two three three degrees of success. Cool, three success, and you add your strength. Uh, I think it's probably strength plus one bashing for uh, a staff. So four. four. Uh, so three plus four is that seven. Seven reduced by his stamina is fuck. I need a bloody stats thing. Daring doggos, don't fail me now. Uh. Cool, what was that? Uh, seven reduced by his stamina is an amount of bashing damage. Cool, he is pretty heavily bruised as he lunges for you and you immediately twat him directly in the side of the face with your staff. Nevertheless, his knife is coming up. May I attempt to dodge? Oh, that's a good point, yeah. We're doing do-, uh, do, do we want to do the dark heresy dodge? System, just everyone gets one free evasion. I oh, that's what, presume that's, so, otherwise that's what I just give. have to take the knife on that's the chin. Can we, give, can we give this fight gun <coughs> rules? Sorry? Can we give this knife fight gun rules? No. No. <laughs> I thought you said Gundam <laughs> rules for a second there. Yes, giant Poor rules for everyone. In that case, I should probably give him his dodge, actually. Let's we'll see if he manages to mitigate anything. Uh, so that's one, zero, one, two. So he takes off two points of damage from yours. Which means you squat, uh, squat him chairly. You squat him chairly in the neck, and it causes an amount of rusing <sighs> to completely mangle the language. Why did I just hit Control S on Roll Twenty? That's not how anything works. <clears throat> he lunges forwards with his knife for Dexter's melee. One, two. That's two successes. Uh, roll your dodge. You need minimum of two to nullify. Uh, it's dodge. Dodge isn't a skill, is it? Dex plus. Oh, yeah, sorry. Dex athletics. That is three successes. <laughs> three successes. Yeah, Grandaddy Idris, ever beetle-like, manages to duck backwards. Uh, but you can hear some stirring from within the uh, hut. Right. I mean, I'll take a look in, in the door, I guess. You uh, you can see a figure slowly moving around in the darkness, evidently rousing itself from bed. <clears throat> oh, there's a uh, Lord buddy. Okay. Granddaddy Idris, what do? I'd like to try and disable him non-lethally. But I'm not sure how much that's gonna, how that's going to take, given his, as you've aforementioned, homicidal rage. I think you'd, at the very least, you're going to need to fill up his bashing damage track. Um, so you need to do a fair amount of extra damage. You don't have a lethal weapon, fortunately, so it's somewhat more difficult for you to accidentally kill him. You'd need to like really beat him down with the stick. Right. But- so I think it's the case of if you have a. You can quite easily do lethal damage with a blunt weapon, but it's, you have to keep hitting them. Yeah, because you, you do bashing, then lethal, whereas lethal does straight lethal. So it's a lot easier to just beat someone until they can't move with a stick than it is to do it with a knife. This To pick a random example out of nowhere. <laughs> mm. Clearly. Or do. Uh, hmm. I'm going to try and hit him again. Okay, same diff as before. Uh, that is Dex Melee, please. It is one success, so I, we don't get in there. Rolling dodge. Uh, that is successfully dodged as he ducks easily under your wide swing. And then he attempts to stab you with the knife. That is fucking hell, one success. All right. Roll the dodge. Fuck it, fuck it, fuck it, fuck it, fuck it. Give me one second. Go on. Uh, 
No, that's one, zero, one, two. No, the two of you continue to trade blows, but there is no end to the combat forthcoming. (coughs) Apart from the sound of his colossal boyfriend rousing from within the hut. Your turn. Mm, I'm going to try and hitting him again. I'm just going to shout in the door at this point. Um, Your friend seems to be having a bit of trouble, and uh, my... Traveling associate uh, seems to have his blood up as well. I don't suppose you've got a way of calming your friend down, do you? A deep and throaty roar emanates from within the hut, sounding more like a bear than a man. Right. Well, he's barely Mm. awake. I'm hardly surprised. I'm so fucking mad at you. (laughs) (laughs) Meanwhile, on the ground... Uh. Uh, <laughs> moaning <laughs> into the dung. Oh no, it's in my mouth. Alright. Uh what do, Benji? Uh, I'm gonna try hit him again. Is he is he looking at any less psychotically angry? No, it's been two rounds of combat. That's uh ten seconds. Right, okay. Gotta try and hit him again then. This is why everyone should have a musket. Okay, so that's three successes. The engagement melee. God damn it! Rolling well, to dodge. The thing is, uh, by the time you've you've loaded one uh, success, uh, uh, damn it! it. You know, you yeah. it's cool the anger's dissipated. Yeah, yeah. yeah Rolling damage. I can't remember the name of the. Um, now. I thought it was just success strength plus. Strength oh, plus sorry. One. Yeah, what am I talking about? It's uh, strength plus, plus net success. Yeah. So, what is your strength plus one plus net successes? Uh, well, I got three successes. He got one dodge, so two night successes. So that's <coughs> six. six. Cool. Uh, Jim Jeffries on gun control. That's that's what it was. Oh, nice. Okay, yeah. you get a solid hit into the head, and he goes careening into the dirt, blood streaming from his forehead. He's still moaning and writhing and screeching. Uh, what Look, do young man? Calm your tits. You did I just wanna- hear. You did just hear the extremely throaty roar from within the hut immediately behind you, and the visage of the man yesterday who you, I was going to say barely, but actually incredibly easily dodged, um, <laughs> is is still fresh in your mind. Oh, Granddad Idris, don't run. These colours don't cut and run. Aye, death wish session it is. <laughs> uh, it's Jesus. fine, it's... it's <laughs> We needed to apologise to this guy. I appreciate you taking a knife for me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he hasn't touched me yet. Yeah, he didn't manage uh, to uh, that knife. knife. While Cobb oh, is yeah. writhing on the ground, and while Idris is preparing himself for round two of gladi- <laughs> gladiatorial <laughs> combat, yeah. I'm going to go find the town guard. Uh, uh, there's, there's no such thing, I'm afraid. Uh, 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 the guys who were on watch earlier. Uh, the the town. Th- those were mostly just people hanging about near the um, near the near the gates, rather than like an official watch. You wouldn't have that except in time of war. Uh, I'll whilst- get the priest. <laughs> you can go go try to get the priest. Uh, everyone else is probably still asleep, or everyone who didn't right. get woken up by the colossal <sighs> berserker rage. Right. In which case, if he's if if Riddick the Rough is face down in the dirt, I will try and retrieve Cobb and beat a retreat. <laughs> Uh, I think Cobb is is actually pretty thoroughly disguised. He, if if you recall, was thrown into a dung, a, a conveniently placed dung pit. I, I don't think I was noticing. I think I was trying more to avoid the knife wielding psycho. Uh, he wasn't knife wielding until uh, shortly after that. <laughs> no, I know, but he didn't come at me, bro. Yeah, <laughs> it, it was really the come at me, bro, that that got him to knife wielding stage. He actually didn't even break that out. God damn it, Benji. I'm calm. It's nothing I'm calm. To, I believe the exact quote was it was nothing to do with us, but bring it on. <laughs> no, I said step one, we had nothing to do with it, and two, bring it on, you little shit. Yes. Um, uh, basically yes. verbatim what I just you said. You did this out the comma, you little shit, Whitey, and that's on you. Oh, oh yeah, okay. Right, Point right. being that Old Cobb is equal parts obscured, and as far as anyone else knows, dead right now. He is more or less surrounded by fertilizer, but okay. he is also safely disguised by the fertilizer, and how could any mortal man have survived that? Why, that could have exactly. killed you up to five times over, arguably. 
Very he's true. more than happy to play the pass. Right, okay, in which case I'm just going to beat a hasty retreat after uh, <laughs> after my comrade. Yeah, you see Bert backing up towards the church, and uh, where are you going for the record, then? Well, toward, with Bert. Doesn't mean I'm going to go inside I was the walking church. off without you, buddy. <laughs> uh, okay. You uh, you begin power walking after Bert, leaving uh, leaving Riddick writhing in the in the dust and the dirt. Cool. And there's a second colossal roar from behind you, and a shower of wood as Riddick's lover bursts out of the hut, smashing the doorway on his way. Internally, I would just like to go. Ooh, more orders. They are absolutely not ordering wood from you. <laughs> <laughs> like have the best wood in all fucking peninsula. I don't think they're that fast at this point. <laughs> Though I suppose I also don't know what options they've got otherwise. Like the only other sort of wood we've got, I guess they can order. Well, something well, from well. Board. Look who just ran out of options. You'd probably take it from someone, maybe. A rating. I don't know. It's not that hard to cut wood. Yeah, but we have backstories for all the forests, and Whisperwood is actually really dangerous for anyone other than the, uh, what's it called, the badger farmers. Uh, Romwood less so, but it's quite a trek. (coughs) And Talgarth is a weird little town. Town, village. (laughs) So the two of you begin beating a speedy retreat towards the church when the ginger mountain throws himself out of the hut, explodes out of the hut, really, uh, and bull rushes towards the only moving targets he can see, screaming bloody murder in full berserker fury. What do? Carry on I'm, lane, then. I'm still going after a... Uh, yeah, it's just the, the, the two of you were moving at walking pace. And uh, now... Be- now, now, Bert. Hello, Bert. Time to uh, remember your god says that uh, tardiness is not a godly thing. I believe it's actually cleanliness is next to godliness, friend. I meant fucking move. Yeah, you've probably got seconds before your gory murder. You know what? You all seem like you need a little bit of decision time to think. Let's hop on over to uh, Old Cobb, who, as the berserker rushes towards the two of you is actually in, in a somewhat convenient state. You, I say somewhat convenient. You should probably, like, take all of the damage, right? You did almost die. Uh, I did. I did. Let's say you... Just, uh, down one life. Okay, well, it actually looks like you're not supposed to take lethal damage. You've got no. that Hamish-style immortality. Uh, so you feel surprisingly fine, all things considered. Oh, like you're visibly drained of your luck, but uh, even though your neck is not in a great state, ah, take like two points of lethal damage and then call whatever. Don't make me dead. Make me uh, feeling fine. Indeed. Uh, what do? What is going on with this <coughs> health pool on the on the sheet? Oh, this is the fucking unworkable world of darkness health pool where everyone Ooh. tracks three separate damage types, which all mean vaguely different things. And oh, you mean you mean the thing that people can demand that they keep in for V5. It's like, oh, we can't get rid of that. That's classic. It's so crap. It's, it's, I genuinely don't even know how to read it. It's it's confusing as hell. Slash yeah. is bashing, X is lethal, hashtag is uh, aggravated. Which I That's don't think fine. you can it's, take. It's more the yeah, plethora of boxes going on that don't quite line I up with any of these things. Yeah, can- so... Uh, you can, uh, a human can take aggravated under niche circumstances, but there's very few things that would ever cause you aggravated. Like, you remember you had a pistol that caused humans aggravated damage in uh, sorceries. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But by and large, aggravated is supernatural damage that afflicts your supernatural condition and can only be healed through supernatural means. It means humans are not, by default, very supernatural, so they don't usually take aggravated damage. Uh, but yeah, no, it is a complete fucking mess. The assorted extra boxes and things are... What does this one even do? I can't see what... That one, that, okay, that one just doesn't work. Huh, weird. Um, yeah, the assorted extra boxes are for various like niche merits and such, which can give you various extra levels of health. <laughs> okay, well, um, yeah, yeah, no, they're, they're completely. I'm working now. I just the main random places. Uh, I think they should start 
down here, at, but it doesn't hugely matter at this point. Like unless you take a full track of lethal damage, it's it's not a big issue. Um, the cool. only thing I think worth noting is yeah, you're currently at minus one to all of your pools because you've taken two points of lethal damage. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, what do yeah, okay. you're currently safely immersed in a large pile of dung. Uh, behind you is the moaning form of the man who put you there, and next to him is his thrown down knife. His berserk uh, housemate has rushed off. Uh, housemate, clear lover, has uh, rushed off after your other two compatriots, who are now quippily beating a tr- retreat, somewhat optimistically in the direction of, I guess, the church. I see. Uh, you are making some unwise decisions. <laughs> I- <laughs> I see Cobb having the chance to inherit flash before his eyes and making the decision we all know he's going to make. Hound I'm, signs. Just <laughs> I'm trying not to influence the decision, but I absolutely see the wrong move happening right now. Could I just sort of crack one eye open? See if the coast is clear. <laughs> The coast is at the moment somewhat clear. There is no telling how many seconds or minutes it will remain that way as doubtless someone is going to start coming out to investigate the roar. At the same time, that was a scary as shit roar and presumably though a lot of people are awake, fewer wanting to draw attention. Well, in that case, I'd like to scuttle to my feet. (laughs) Bursting (laughs) quietly out of the dung pile as though you're wearing a fecal ghillie suit. (laughs) Nosferatu. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. (laughs) What do Stenchy person? Nosferatu. I'm so fucking mad at you. (laughs) (laughs) I'd like to sort of quietly just try to sneak around behind the house. Okay. Away away from these fools. Uh, While they're distracted. Let's see. Uh, which house? Riddick's house? Yes, yes. You were flung across the street, so you'd need to cross the street with him in... Well, I, I oh, okay. Well, then, yeah. In that, in, in that like, case, then I'll, I'll uh, try and beat a hasty retreat in a different direction. Okay. <laughs> Do you see Whitey's look of visible relief there? <laughs> That's not exactly how I was expecting it to go. I don't but think it's um, how any of us thought that was going to go. Hope, perhaps. Oh, no. And all because I didn't add a willpower. <laughs> well, no, not all. There's a lot of... Uh, partly because I didn't add a willpower. Yeah. Mainly because I dropped the news quite badly. <laughs> okay. Who knew he would get his revenge for that turn if I ate? One day yes. in the distance. Yes, that's what this was revenge for. The turnip. The turnip was the drop. I'm calm. But it couldn't be anything else. I was a old Co- old Cobb was a was a generous old man to those poor orphans. And so old Cobb beads uh, beads beats a hasty, if somewhat shit covered, retreat off into the. Uh, where are you heading in Saint Asaf? Actually, are you trying to leave town or? Oh, no, no I, I'd like to. Kind of find somewhere nearby and just knock on a door, maybe. You are covered in poo. <laughs> covered in poo. It's, it's fine. My my grift senses are tingling. <laughs> You're covered in poo. I am covered in poo. <laughs> <laughs> I can use this to my advantage. Imagine, imagine you're a tenth century uh, Viking colonist in southern Wales. Someone knocks on your door at the crack of dawn in early April. You open it to find the man drenched <laughs> head to toe in cow dung, asking for nebulous but <laughs> wide-ranging <laughs> favours. Ah, the old carp way. <laughs> okay. Yeah, screw it. Let's give it a little chance to see what you're up to. You sneak several streets away to an entirely different house, one that you've never seen before, and thus are fairly confident must be relatively unrelated to anyone. You know, probably, how small a town can this be? And give a firm knock on the door. It's a few moments before a rather bleary-eyed lass opens it, looking confused and more than a little bit terrified at your nightmarish fecal appearance. 
or do? Uh, I would like to show a little bit of expression. I'd like to convince her. Is, is your expression not covered up by the aforementioned poo? What, uh, Possibly. It, it can be expressed. Yeah, you're getting one hell of a difficulty <laughs> mod on this. Uh, what is... What are you trying to give it her off? Going to going to give her a little bow. Hello, me lass. I've been uh, I've been terribly accosted. This this old man. I'm in need of your your assistance. Do you uh do you, do you possibly know the nearest the nearest river or well I could help myself to, and and possibly <coughs> well this this might be me asking a little bit too much out of the kindness of your heart. You got a little bit of coin that I could possibly borrow to go and get myself uh, a new change of clothes. <laughs> you fucking bastard. All right, yeah. Charisma expression difficulty nine. <laughs> Remember, you're at minus one pool mod from your lethal neck cricks. That's fine. Uh, but I will spend a willpower. <laughs> this time. Uh, what did... Sorry, what was it? Charisma expression? Uh, charisma expression, yeah. He only spends it on this, stuff. I've earned the use of this willpower. <laughs> I think there's <laughs> something to be said for... Oh! <laughs> there's a net three successes. The, oh, uh, the lass it's... looks you up and down and says, <laughs> Scandy, isn't she? I believe you to be more needing of coin than anyone <laughs> I have ever met. <laughs> That's going to get picked up on the on the recording. <laughs> I bloody hope so. Otherwise, half the cardboard stuff's useless. We haven't got to eel march yet. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> she rushes back into the house, comes back, hands you two silver coins. Take these. Rush out through the gate back that way. If you keep that turn left keep going. You'll come down to the beach. I would just walk straight into the ocean and keep going for quite a while. (laughs) I've heard that many a time. (laughs) Clean or no? (laughs) She uh, retches visibly. If you wouldn't mind, please leave. Your smell is unbelievably potent. I will, I will, and thank you, my lass. I might be, I might be back later. Um, just, just, just to thank you and possibly have some room and board. She looks confused and just kind of slides the door shut. And with that, having made a mild profit, Old Cobb goes off to wash himself with his earned coins. And Excellent. Snap back to the other two. Oh, there goes gravity. God damn it. Bert and Granddaddy Idris, uh, at Idris, you are being chased by the period equivalent of a giant ginger T Rex. What do? Uh, I'd like to break into a run. Uh, I presume Bert would as well. Where are you running to? Because you. No, 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 no. From. That's the important part. That is also a valid response. (laughs) I was just asking because last check, you were heading to the church, and I don't know if that's going to help. You would hope, but... uh, Whitey? Um, I mean, I'm going to hope that he's going to be distracted by by, uh, Idris, given that Idris is the one who's about to run, (laughs) and I'm actually the one who... uh, Tipped him off as the fact there was a fight going on. I tragically don't think he knows that. Idris actually managed to get the guy down on the floor, uh, get the guy, get Riddick down on the floor before uh, the ginger lad burst out of the room. So he's heard your voice, but he only spoke to, I think, only Idris yesterday, and that only in passing. I think he spoke to Cobb as well. Fair, but that doesn't really help your situation, I'm afraid. No. I want to talk this out. I really want to talk this out. This is not how my character wanted this to go at all. I try to talk it out. (laughs) (laughs) To be fair, the other two also tried to talk it out. It was the way they talked it out, really. (laughs) 
I, I mean, I am role playing the fact that my character has one intelligence. <laughs> Don't you have wits, though? Yeah. Oh no, you've got one wits as well. Equally yeah, one no, wits. <laughs> one intelligence, one wits. What's your social like? Uh, you're charismatic. Yeah, no, you know what? You can't say it was bad roleplay for either of them. <laughs> Mr. Zero Empathy and Mr. Zero Situational or Social Awareness. As Bert wanders into the room, the sole basically functioning humanoid. Um, I'm weighing up my options to run it, laying it for the church, or just, to, just diving out the way. I think part of me is tempted for dive out the way. Tackle him. That's my third option. Tackle the guy, like, rugby player style, so lock round the knees. You actually conceivably might have been on tour with this guy. Let's, yeah, let's see. Yeah, that's the thing. If, like, uh, I will take... I will take an intelligence... Fuck, oh, that's going to be go awful. <laughs> Let's call it Intelligence Brawl to see if you remember like how terrifying he was as a fighter. Diff 5. <coughs> Net 1 success. One. Yeah. You uh, don't usually fight in the same rank as this guy, but that's partially because you don't really see much after he gets going. He psychs himself up before battle. And then there's like a ginger blur, and then just a mist of blood and screams. You once saw him pull the head off a donkey. Right. That was not a zero to hundred, he was pissed off at the time. But your chances in a tackle, whilst not zero, are not especially high. I actually have really good strength. So does he. I also have very good brawl. So does he. Uh, yeah, I figured that would be the case. So, maybe, actually, let's take a look at your strength and brawl. Maybe I'm underestimating you. Seven. Strength and brawl. Yeah, you, you're an extremely good brawler, actually. You did see him pull the head off that donkey. Oh, okay, that's it. I, I'm going to turn go right and fucking launch myself into a tackle and try and pin him. <laughs> All right. The problem is you can't, you can't, we can't reason with this guy. We just need to run. Oh, no, and he, he needs to calm all down. Calm has ended up so <laughs> well out of this. <laughs> no, he, I don't need to win anything. I just need him need to give him a couple of seconds to calm down. Mm. If that means pinning him to the floor and shouting in his face to calm yeah. the fuck down. But neither, neither of those are particularly calming things. He is a berserker in the most literal sense of the words. So he's he's not going to calm down, short of magic, passing out, or running out of things to punch, or I guess something else to short his adrenaline. If he can't punch because he's pinned, <coughs> he will bite he's your face not- off. Yeah. Like, he will physically chew you into oblivion if he has the chance. That said, if you successfully brawl him, and it's not like you don't know this as well, so you might conceivably still win the brawl, but... You'd need to really pin it down for a couple of minutes, uh, which I, I'm totally happy to let you roll on, but you're looking at probably some extended diff 9, diff 10 stuff. If you spent all of your willpower on it consistently after pinning him, you might still be able to do it. You can still talk this out, but I'm not going to tell you that it's not a, a Herculean endeavor that you are committing yourself to. Though you would almost, running away. Though you would almost certainly get a dot of fame or two out of it if you succeeded. Local pig farmer rankles giant berserk. That is one hell of a story. <sighs> thing is, Bert's a very real risk of death, and I'm quite enjoying Bert. Um, so I don't let's just keep run. running. No, Bert is courageous. That's the thing. Bert's really, actually, very courageous, and he's done multiple tours with this man. Yeah, uh, Granddaddy Idris is courageous. Granddaddy Idris doesn't know when to back down from a fight. Granddaddy Idris does know when to run away from a psychotic lunatic. The thing is, he has actually kind of gone from zero to ten here. I shouted a warning to him, and he came out just windmilling his arms around. 
I mean, he, he didn't even look out the door to find out how bad it was or to help or try and de-escalate. He just came out swinging his arms like windmills. This uh, this was a 0 to 100 scenario. So even though I know he psychs himself up, he's gotten out of bed as a berserker. But uh, see, this he, is a little bit weird. He did he did think his lover was in danger. Yeah, and I asked him to come give me a hand de-escalating. <laughs> And were you talking to another sane, nice individual, that might have worked. However, as a berserker, he's kind of fundamentally psychologically damaged. Mm. Like, the the most popular, uh, or at least most credible explanation I, I have personally seen for berserkers uh, recently is, is uh, probably a fairly complex form of PTSD. I mean, the PTSD bit I can totally understand. A few. Uh, it's uh, there's some kind of mushroom thing where they get <sighs> super high. Mushroom is argued, but it's it's argued. Uh, mushrooms are argued, but they're argued as a like a thing that is shown rather than uh, a thing that is shown in artwork. But there's not necessarily a huge amount of evidence <laughs> for which mushrooms could do it. There's like, also some. There's also some evidence that it's a genetic flaw, given it was passed through families as well. I have not heard or read much on that. Well, you had you had family. It was it was known as a family thing. Like berserkers could have berserker children, so it's like I that sounds a bit uh, sus to me. But regardless, it, there's, there's some we'll, thoughts on. Well, but, I mean, uh, to be fair, it sounds like I, I haven't done the same reading as you, so I can't make a, a, a reasonably fair judgment. But regardless, let's uh, we'll we'll pace on this. Uh, reg- uh, needless to say, you are not necessarily dealing with someone in in a particularly rational state. Unfortunately, can I at least remember his name? Yeah, sure. What's let the whole sex? Let me. Olaf the perpetually angry. I've been trying to give everyone alliterative names. Uh, So who have we got? Bob. Bjorn. No, I'm looking at my Toste the truculent. North Germanic name list. Christoph. I've I've completely forgotten all words meaning angry. Fuel Fuel the furious. And do the aggravated? God damn it! You're you're looking at uh, Rickle the. I was gonna say Rangry. Rowdy? Then. Yeah, Rickle the Rowdy. Rangry. <laughs> sure, Rickle, 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 Rickle. You are looking at Rickle the Rangry. <laughs> <laughs> the raging. I'm guessing you would say. It's a Adam. mistranslation from his native Nordic tongue. Great. More backstory for the pile. <laughs> You're just mad that you pile. might be torn apart by Rickle the Rank. <clears throat> uh, I'm, I'm going to turn around and shout. But, oh well, get into a stance to defend myself first, but also say Rickle, snap out of it. I'm getting my most commanding sen- uh, tone of voice. All right, here's what we'll do. I I will let you I will let you roll this, though I'm not going to let you use willpower on it, and I will make it a diff ten. But if you succeed, you will successfully calm him down. All right, what's the roll? You can mm, charisma empathy diff ten. We will have been through a lot together. I can certainly empathize if we've been on the front lines. That is hookasaka hookasaka hoo. That is a botch. Oh no! <laughs> oh dear! How many lies have you got? Looks like Just gold granddaddy dude. Granddaddy dude, Just this whacking stick ain't done for today. <laughs> These damn whiffer snappers don't know when to quit. Granddaddy Idris. Meanwhile, Cobb at the river. Yeah, Cobb at this point is just about collecting his two silver coins from that lass, having extricated himself from the dung pile and sodded off a few streets over. Uh, Granddaddy Idris, you hear a third almighty bellow from behind you, this one of pure hate and rage, as the berserker launches into full-on kill, burn, maim, rip, and tear mode. You have two choices, Idris, here. You can either make an utterly clean getaway, or you can double back to help Bert. Bert's a good customer. He buys plenty of wood for his picking closures. I'm not leaving him. 
skidding on his heels, Grandaddy Idris slides to a halt and charges back to help Bert. Bert! You're immediately engaged in melee by uh, Rickolf the Rangry. As he, I just, it sounds like Scooby Doo. Why did I let Callum talk me into this? He could have said no. Right, right, oh. <laughs> I'm not giving him a Scooby Doo voice. I'm not doing it. Do it. Lead into Help it. <laughs> okay, oh Christ. I don't have any gin in the house. I'm not prepared for this. Rick says on a Monday night. <laughs> Look, it's session. I don't got work in the morning. Or I do, but shut up. Uh <clears throat> Rickoff, I'm going to say, even though you're defending and we let Benji go first when he was defending because you botched that, you're in the middle of your snap out of it when he gets a sudden burst of speed and launches into combat with you first. Yep, yep. So, roll, let me just double check his attack. That's not what I was meaning to give him. Do da do da do da do. We met with PTSD. You piss them both off. What do? <laughs> <laughs> they were having a perfectly fine time until you're rocked up with atrocious news and somehow worse manners. Like, you open. Oh, I didn't have bad manners at all. No, that's very true. But 60% of the, 66% of the party did. You opened yeah. with your family is dead and went rapidly downhill from there. Uh, cool, so rolling to hit that's a lot of hits that's six hits <laughs> so many hits six I refer you to Homer Simpson oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's dead here potentially, uh, you can roll your dodge which is athletic spend a willpower Dex Dear God, man. <laughs> yeah, I am spending willpower on this one. If my willpower counter will go down. There we go. Alright. What am I rolling? Uh, Dex Athletics, Diff 6 for dodge. That is three four. successes, which takes... Four for the willpower. Oh, yeah, four, sorry. Uh, which takes him down from six to two, which doesn't nullify completely, but... Uh, that's reduced damage considerably. Yes. Uh, to two plus his strength, which is five, which means take seven levels of bashing damage. Oh, okay, sorry, no, so, uh, you you can soak with stamina, so it's seven minus your stamina. Question is how much stamina you got. Yeah, that is the question. Uh, I don't know how the health track works on this one anymore. Uh, I think I have to take a damage and... It, it's been forever. Uh, it's actually got quite a bit of stamina. So the health tracker is you go down to where it says bruised, and then you, uh, for bashing damage, use the slashes. So you take seven minus four, only three levels of bashing, actually, to be fair. You have four stamina? I don't fucking find my stamina. Yeah, Bert is a fucking hardy guy. That is a, that is a tank of a fucking yeah. peasant. <laughs> like, I've got four stamina. I, I've been on the front lines. But humble pig farmer and also ridiculous warrior man. Humble pig farmer and Rambo. Oh. Seriously, where the fuck is my stamina? It's uh, Yeah, I, I've got four stamina stuff. and one strength. So he's, he's used to taking oh, yeah. the hits, his old cop. That's, that's fair. I mean, he did just take his head getting almost pulled off. <laughs> uh, cool, Bert, your go. Uh, cool. Um, I will look up combat moves to see what pinning is. Unless you want to yeah. just try and beat him into the dirt and see if you can calm him down that way. Concuss him enough that he uh, starts to snap out of it. I think in this system, unlike Dark Heresy uh, and various others, you you actually can beat someone unconscious fairly fairly well. I think it's. If you get them down to... Yeah, if you fill his tracker with bashing, 
then I'm pretty sure he passes out briefly. All right, yeah, I'm going to try and concuss him. <laughs> He's going to pummel him. Uh, yeah, cool. That is dex brawl. Diff six. Not strength brawl? We're just brute forcing it? No, because it's dex to hit, and then you add your strength to the damage. Ah, uh, okay. Fuck me. Uh, yeah. What? Usually you can't butch, uh, butch botch combat rolls, but for some reason we were doing it for Benji, so I guess we're doing it for the whole session. Uh, so yeah, that's net one success. Uh, in which case he's rolling to dodge. He's only going to get one dodge to, uh, one thing to dodge you. One success. There we go. My brain. I remember stuff. Uh, cool. So that's minus one, zero, one, two. Yeah, he, it doesn't even dodge it, really. More like your fist impacts the giant slab of meat uh, and does nothing. He basically tanks the shot. Yeah. There's no no, uh, no weight behind the punch. Unfortunately. Poor, poor the impact from hitting the floor. Top of the turn order. We'll have Benji as character Granddaddy Idris arrive on the next turn. Rolling to murderize. That is one, two, three, four. He's got a specialty. Five, six hits. Uh, six successes to hit, brother. Would will you like power. to roll the dodge? <laughs> Spend all the willpower. Fuck me. That is net two. Which means he is four plus five, nine damage minus your stamina if you'd like to take four points of bashing. Uh, four points of bashing? Nine minus four. Five points of bashing. Uh, that's filled my track up to incapacitated. He punches you in the head and you go flying, knocked unconscious, your jaw practically unset. In fact, Bert, we have established your ridiculously surprising athletics... Not Bert, sorry, uh, Granddaddy Idris. We've established your ridiculous uh, footwork skill. How do you react to Bert being sent flying? You can see from the teeth ballooning out, ribboning out into the sky like reverse bird shits. That's a fantastic simile. Good job, you. Uh, that he's very obviously been knocked out and will be out for at least 20 to 30 seconds, which is easily long enough to have at least two limbs and probably his head pulled clean of his body and hurtled into assorted directions. What Looks do? like I'm going to teach more of you some manners. <laughs> and then the party wipes. Oh, yeah, wait, no, because no, 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 Cobb survived. Yeah, old, yeah Cobb, survived. old Cobb has Just. survived. You're going to rush in uh, after... <laughs> so remember the next session when Old Cobb moves in with uh, Sinful John... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm gonna haunt you so fucking badly, right? You're not gonna me of ghosts. Sleep. What is My your willpower? Ghost actually? And simple John. Yeah. Let's have a look. Do you qualify to become a ghost? <laughs> you do. Yeah. The minimum is four. You also need a driving, uh, like assorted passions and like uh, a reason to stay behind. Though being murdered is a uh, not uncommon reason. I got murdered. <laughs> it's the reason? Tom's fault. <laughs> Yeah, what's the reason? Fuck that Cobb guy. Oh, in fact, sorry. I was murdered. It was Cobb's fault. He's trying to move into my farm. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> he got me haunted by a ghost. <laughs> Does that mean you'd have through one of your fetters would be your prize pig, Bessie? <laughs> oh, I don't know what a fetter is. Oh, sorry. Yes, yes it does. Uh, a fetter is like... You know in a ghost movie when they have one object that they really, really love and they're super obsessed yeah, with? Yeah. That's basically a feta. It, it's I a suppose, thing yeah. that chains you to reality. It's not old uh, Cobb that's moving in anyway. It's uh, Uncle Batroll. <laughs> Was that... Uncle should have dodged. Kindly Uncle Batroll. God damn it. With his uh, two points in alternate identity. <laughs> Yes. I don't think you can fool a ghost by disguising yourself. <laughs> you I, don't, I think you lack imagination. <laughs> <laughs> I would have tried this from the beginning. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, put on a different hat. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Can't catch me, ghost. Okay, uh, cool. So, we've got four minutes of sesh left. Let's see if we can get a player character fatality in this. <laughs> Granddaddy Idris. It sounded like you're, uh, you're going to rush in and try to tackle the berserker. I'm not going to try and tackle him. I'm going to try and beat him with my staff. That's entirely fair. As Whitey can attest, when my characters are armed with wacky sticks, they That's are very true. good at combat. Yeah, he, he's actually meant with oh, staff. Warhammer <laughs> Fantasy, right, yes. <laughs> Several <laughs> characters built to be warriors. And who's the best fighter? One wacky boy. Okay, uh, I will take... Uh, let's take a simple dex roll, uh, diff six, to see if you... Uh, who wins initiative toss, you or the Berserker, as the two of you clash. Two, two successes. Of success. You can roll first. <laughs> okay. I'm going to whack him with my whacking stick. Yeah, that is uh, dex melee diff six. One, two, three, four. I have melee DA woodcutting. This is, doesn't this doesn't count yeah, for it's not really wood cutting. It's, it's a wacky stick and a giant ginger bear. <laughs> okay, so that is three successes. What does the DA stand for, by the way? Dark Ages. Oh, okay. Uh, I, it, it, it's, I think, just because they adapted the sheets. They used to be slightly yeah. different. <laughs> there's melee and then there's melee Dark Ages, and it's basically to show off that there's different types of weaponry between the two of them. I mean, that makes sense. Uh, cool. Rolling to dodge. One, two, three. You get net one success. Bizarre. So that is four plus ones for five bashing damage. Five bashing reduced. Yeah, you get a solid whack into. Oop, I should reset the stats on this guy because the other one's unconscious. Uh. Wait. Uh. Cool. You get a solid whack into his chest. He wheezes ever so slightly, but is otherwise still going. His turn. He's right. Yes, I am. That's actually zero successes. (laughs) As he punches for you, and you deftly, beetle-like, weave under the staff. (laughs) We can we can squeeze in one more round, I think. Can I say instead of weaving harmlessly, can I just harmlessly whap him on the nose? No. I I would say no. There's a decent chance he'd catch the staff in his teeth at this point. Fair. If it if it were a less crazy psychotic fighter, enemy. Yeah, psychotic. Yeah. Okay, right. Well, well he's having an episode, I suppose. Okay. Let's do this thing. Oh god! That is one success. Rolling to dodge. That's enough successes. Specifically, like, three, four, three. Yeah. Oh, no, it's only because he's only got a pool of six, so it would have only been two, because the last dice doesn't count. <clears throat> but now, rolling to hit. One success. Would you like to roll to dodge? I'm going to spend a willpower. That is enough. Uh, yeah, two successes. Okay. The two of you <laughs> duck and trip. Well, not duck. You repeatedly whack at him with your stick. He repeatedly doesn't give a shit and throws meaty planet tearing punches your way, which you just about manage to dodge back from each time. And that is tragically, I think, a good place to leave it for the week. Tension, tension, tension. Oh, not for old Cobb. Yeah, no, old Cobb's going to be fine, but like... He's having a great time. For Whitey, we build, oh, let's have a high lethality campaign, and then let him get attached to his character, uh, and then... <laughs> eat one punch. I didn't eat one punch, I ate two. He, he ate two from a colossally OP melee character. After knowing that this guy is... Like, my character knew he was a berserker and still went, fuck this, I'm still going to try and talk him down. Okay, remind us for next session. I'm unconscious. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, that was mean. I shouldn't have laughed. And has lost teeth. Uh, any other reminders? Granddaddy Idris needs to teach these young whippersnappers what real fighting's about. 
A uh, kind local girl gave, uh, or kind local woman, I don't know what her age. Uh, yeah, kind, kind local woman was, was kind to all cop. And you still didn't turn over a movie. Cool, anything else? Oh, no. oh, lifetime of grifting. <laughs> Any, uh, anything else? Uh... Oh, the uh, the pre the local priest we've acquainted ourselves with. I can't remember his name. Uh, Niall the Noxious. Ah, yes. On account uh, of how how much he smells of lilac and dewberry. Yeah. <laughs> lilac and dewberry. Oh dear. <coughs> Summer morning. He stinks like lavender. Oh dear. Any other reminders for next week? Don't think so, no. No? no I think that's it. Uh, feedback. Anything you liked, anything you disliked, anything you'd like to see more of or less of next time? Uh, <laughs> I think so. I, I quite liked the uh, the <laughs> instant ramp up in aggression going on. Um, I do feel a little bit bad for YC and Ben. We're just <laughs> leaving them to it. I think you should only feel bad for YT. Like, no offense to Benji. Oh, yeah, yeah, that sorry. Was I, I feel bad for YT. Back. Yeah. Yeah, we could have easily de, de-, de- escalated the situation. 100%. Oh, we, not my, character, my character has called the correct, the correct way of <laughs> beating the ghost <laughs> twice. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it counts as twice as apologizing to the brother properly. Um, he has given us a night on hallowed ground after putting aside his differences for the Nords. Um, he has arranged food for the party. <laughs> and he is the one who is currently face down in the dirt minus a couple of teeth. If it's any consolation. And very at risk of dying. You'll probably face up in the dirt. You did get like flying uppercut punched, so you would have landed on your back, I would have thought. So, right, uh, sure at least you're not face down. I, it sounded more uplifting in my head, not gonna lie. But either way, I'm those, those five points, and I'm the one who is, uh, at very much at risk of death right I now. I remember this is when a lot of Christian saints are being canonized, so just think of this as your trials to become a saint. You might or conceivably, uh, like, <laughs> get local canonized or something, I suppose. There is that. Um, saint Bert of Mold. Yeah, Saint Bert, Bert of Mold. Bert, had I not taken that merit, I would have quadruple died. That's so, yeah. sure you would have quadruple died. Uh, what was I going to say? Thing. Uh, I, like, on my front, I would say, fucking Jesus Christ, that was, that was some on point in character decision making from everyone, everyone involved. <laughs> like, holy fuck. Not just playing the characters, but playing the characters' stats as well. The zero empathy, the no social intelligence, the fucking single reasonable man stuff. Oh, it's beautiful. I was cringing the whole fucking time, is the thing. Because, like, almost anywhere else you could get away with a lot of these comments. But in the little Viking raider colony, speaking to the man who already hates you and his berserker boyfriend, first thing in the morning as well. Yeah. Good times. Oh. 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 But we didn't have anyone die, and that is unexpected. Not as embarrassing as the dragon, but still. I can't even remember the exact words I used well, to enrage you, so. It's fine, because we'll have the recording, so oh. we'll be able to listen back to that whole mess unfold. <laughs> Editing's gonna be interesting. It was something along the lines of um, your... Uh, ed- Paraphrased, paraphrased, but it was, um, your, your siblings are dead and I had something to do with it. No, it was, it was, your, your, your sister has, or your, your sister has come back and she's under the, your, she's under the notion that I had something to do with this. I want you to dissuade her. Oh no, it was, a, it was, a, no, it wasn't, um, she's under the notion. It's that you very firmly implied you did have something to do with it. But otherwise, yes, your quote was clo- closer. Because that was why I laughed. You you straight up said, and I had something to do with it. <laughs> it was... I mean... <laughs> I mean, you did. 
probably the second quickest fortune reversal that I think I've ever GM'd for immediately after that one time with young Nicholas and the demon. Oh, yeah. It's like, it's not quite on that level of bad decision making. <laughs> it was pretty fucking bad. But I it, don't know. <laughs> well, there's, there's some standout moments from fucking Chilean wizards. I mean, the only one that occurs to me is you beating up that priest on Christmas Day whilst oh, screaming, <laughs> whilst <laughs> screaming <laughs> about how holy Two you are. words. All right. Which two? You know which two. I do not Rocket remember. Car. Rocket car. Hey, rocket car was a blinding that's not, success. That's not a fortune reversal either. Yeah, that wasn't a fortune reversal. <laughs> it was, given that previous to that, I'd literally just saved him from fucking freezing water. I think, I think Hulk Priest was definitely uh, a stronger reversal of fortunes, yeah. though. Oh, man. Don't, don't find a man in his own house. And that's the house of God on Christmas Day. <laughs> <laughs> he was literally fighting you with magic Jesus powers, and you were screaming that you were holier than him as he was smiting you with magic Jesus powers on Christmas Day. <laughs> Underneath a mission. Yes. Fucking, it's not quite my peak Benji roleplay moment of all time, but it's definitely top five. Oh, man, I wish we'd recorded Chili. That was... The fucking oh, time. Me too. Me too. <clears throat> ah, well. When Ghost Hunters comes out. Cool. Uh, questions? Anything anyone was narratively unclear of in that session? <laughs> no, I think it was pretty no. clear. <laughs> yeah, pretty, pretty fair. Yeah. Oh. Down to five lives. I, uh, I hope everyone is okay. I am being a bit harsh with the lethality, but we also specifically said it was going to be a high lethal, uh, uh, high lethality. Oh yeah, we, we are shitty, and, yeah, shitty yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I roll with the punches, so to speak. I expected to kill someone in session one, and we're now like we just finished session three, and so far the worst that's happened to a player character has been lost teeth. I suppose, arguably, maybe brain <clears throat> damage from the unconsciousness, but oh, also Cobb being horrendously assaulted. <laughs> Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh, yeah! yeah. Cobb Cobb's neck. Neck. The, the absolutely not, but absolutely, definitely dead. <laughs> I feel like I. Uh, no, never mind. I already did that joke. Uh, cool. Okay. Everyone following shit. And let's do some. I feel like I've lost. Have I forgotten something? No, I haven't. Uh, let's do some XP. Do, do, do. Plot progress. Does anyone feel like you all made any significant plot progress this session? Uh, well, we met the brother. No. But other than that... Yeah, I don't think I've met... Well, I don't think we've made that much progress this session. Yeah, I, I think... Actually, if anything, I think we've hurt our chances, so... Yeah. yeah. Well, I also plot really progress. wish I'd spent my XP between sessions. I would possibly be alive now if I'd spent that XP. I'm sat from 15. Possibly. Yes, no one. The... Uh, I think the closest you got to advancing was where the, when what's it called? Uh, old Cobb almost died. And if Old Cobb had stayed dead, arguably that would have been plot progress, but he didn't. <laughs> so that is yeah, <laughs> negative, negative plot progress. But I'm not going to deduct XP for it because that would be dumb and mean. Uh, character development. Does anyone feel like they developed this, uh, their characters this session? Uh, a little, again, not much. Again, I, I, I don't think we developed our characters. I think we just leaned hard into them. I mean, I, I would be inclined to say that at the very least, you could argue Bert potentially did. Uh, in, in that there, there's a difference between hauling the local reprobate out to the cer uh, ceremony, out to the cemetery, to apologize to a ghost. That, that's you know pretty decent versus. I can run or I can try to calm down this raging berserker who I once saw brutally murder a small equine. There is a gulf yeah. of difference. The, the thing is, like, yeah, I always set out to have Bert. Originally, Bert was, the wha was meant to be this wacky and too stu uh, more courage than brains character. Um, and now he's actually become this sympathetic war vet. 
um, who's a little bit God-fearing and otherwise relatively hardworking, um, he's still got that more courage than brains bit, but that comes from having been to war with people rather than mm. just for the sake of. Uh, so yeah, I, I played into it, but also it's it's costing me big. But I, I think mean, it's all like as the uh, as as you were kind of molded into the straight man that you didn't expect. Conversely, old Cobb, I never I never intended for him to be this murderous sleaze bag. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, to be fair, you, you never intended to him to be Count Olaf. Well, no, he was he was only ever going to be a little bit of a grifter, but <laughs> he he is utter next scum. Le- <laughs> this this next level, I murder your parents, and then you, and then I go and tell your brother about it to his face. <laughs> Okay, so old, uh, Bert becomes ever more valorous. Uh, old Cobb becomes ever more sleazy. I think that's fair. Uh, what was I going to say? I was going to say a thing about Bert. I love the idea. Yeah, I love the idea that Bert was billed as being a little bit dumb, but drastically underestimated the average intelligence, emotional, social, and just general of just people in the region. And thus, even with his slightly dumb brain, is still markedly better adapted for everything than almost anyone else he knows. Yeah. The way I switch this fucking sinful John, the the all or nothing character on every stat. <laughs> He's, he is a train wreck of stats. Ever just go have a look at his sheet. It's mental. Oh, I don't even know if I want to right now. Uh, exclusive roleplay. Yeah. Anyone? Uh, does anyone feel like anyone else roleplayed particularly well that session? I mean, I, that's the that, but I think I think these other two definitely did as well. I I think Cobb was played up quite well. He continued to be uh, an ignorant asshole who doesn't think before he opens his fucking mouth. He stole from people. He grifted. <laughs> he... D- I think we can upgrade him to actively sociopathic. He has transcended mere yeah. idiocy at this point. Yeah, he's like, I got I got him a cheap meal. He took ev- basically everything on the table. He went to so- he, on, He's, he's the, the man who has his pocket open and he's funneling like silverware. I- <laughs> As he's escaping the scene of his own assault, <laughs> like him being assaulted, he knocks on someone's door, begs for coin, gets the coin, <laughs> wanders <laughs> off. Is it, uh, it, all, uh, it all felt like it made sense at the time, is the thing, right? It's only afterwards that everything gets... Oh. Hi, I'm dirty. Here, have some coin. Excuse me, what the fuck just happened? I have played with rogue trader characters who are better adjusted. I'm, I'm just putting that out there. To be yeah. fair as well, Ewan, mm. do you or do you not want to see rogue trader Callum? I do, but I have long since... No, I'm, I'm well aware that yeah, Callum doesn't like 40k, thing. but my god, do I want to see it. It's it would well be a season. thing of fucking beauty. No, it wouldn't. It would be enough, a thing like, of We know terror. you don't like... Yeah, we don't know. We know you don't like 40k, but actually, your personality type is so well suited for Rogue Trader specifically. I kind of see it as like yeah, Del Boy in space. Callum Del Boy in has, space, I can get on with. Who has never not picked up a strategy game and immediately gone for, I will just make gold and that will all be all I do. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, oh, yes no, I do think Callum would like make a good, a good Rogue Trader. That's. Uh, <laughs> Dear, anyway, right, okay, so I've got one nomination for Cobb. Any other uh, nominations and why? I think YT roleplayed well. Just constant, consistently staying in character and they're letting the character affect his decisions. Fair, fair. I have been with the remaining, uh, remaining the great unwatched. <laughs> yeah, likewise. It, he, he took that so far. <laughs> So, no, I would, ra- I would rather sleep in a ditch than have a bath. It wasn't I a ditch, it was a piss-soaked street, but at this but point it was, was academic. <laughs> I was genuinely expecting Ben to, like, perhaps cave in and for Ewan to self-baptize him. I GM whispered you and say, are you trying to baptize Ben right now? Baptize the pagan? I have no comment. He was... 
He was very keen on getting us to that beach. He really was. <laughs> but uh, yeah, like I, I see. I totally thought that was where that was going. I, I and then like, committed to the no anything, anything but a bath. I, I, I never thought I would see Benji so committed to remaining drenched in badger piss. <laughs> oh. All right, yeah. So what is that? That's that's uh, granddaddy. It bothers me that your granddaddy is misspelled. Granddaddy Idris remains the great unwashed forever. Cool. That's... Right, okay, I make that out to be six experience points for session number eight. That's zero points of plot progress, uh, only because we can't go into the negatives. Two points of character development. Bert becomes ever more valorous, and old Cobb becomes ever more sleazy. Three points, excellence of roleplay, that's Cobb, the murderous sociopathic arse, Bert frantically and constantly tries to de-escalate, and Grandad Idris remains the great unwashed forever, plus one point standard. Which means it's time for everyone's favourite part of the session. It's the highlights. YC, do you have any highlights for that session? <laughs> um... Cobb almost getting his head ripped off. I'm uh, putting almost in inverted commas there, because that... Yeah, he did. He got, he got torn off four times and reattached, each with an additional uh, inch in neck length. Add that as a stat. <laughs> I almost um, feel like we should give him a custom floor for some kind of bad neck from this point on. He mm. uh, can't turn his head, he has to kind of rotate his body. <laughs> It just it never stops being sore and I can't figure out why. Sorry, any other highlights? Uh Cobb steals the contents of a dinner table. Cobb somehow gets paid for being filthy. Cobb. Um Cobb manages to turn you... shit into literal silver. Yeah. Uh Rift is strong with this one. No, it's not. You're really bad at it, but you keep coming away really well. <laughs> <laughs> I invented attacks on the spot. Twice. Twice. Idris would rather, Idris would rather smell of piss than sleep indoors. Sleep indoors. I think that's it for me. Fair. Uh, Benji, do you got any highlights for that session? All I had man of peace. Man of peace meets Nordic man. <laughs> not a man. Not necessarily a man of peace. I've been to war multiple times, and I've been a long moment. No, I know, but it's just like you tried to make peace with it. They've also met before. Okay, fine. I uh, know because that's got that's got commas on it. I wanted to say man of peace zero from fist one, but that's got commas on it. De-escalating the berserker. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, I'll just... Wacky Stick beats Knife. Wacky Stick did beat Knife. I'll definitely give you that. Wacky Stick always beats Knife. Sad truth. We'll see how it does for the Berserker. Uh, now, I know there's a table behind Callum, but I thought that was the floor and that Kutch was just massive. She is massive. Yeah, Big old Kutch chunk is just giant. Uh, <coughs> anything else? <laughs> Two, bring it on, you little shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was that was a moment. I'm gonna I'm gonna lose it listening back to that on the recording. I I, I think I mentioned uh, I was listening to the court wizard section the other day and the spiral oh, the of chaos punch. <laughs> the punch heard round the hold. Uh, any any other highlights, Benji? Uh, hmm. Just to come back to you, we can spin on to Callum. Yeah, I'll come back to me. All right, Callum. Any highlights for that session? Um, <laughs> just just run to the sea and keep going. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Uh, anything else? Uh, um, the oh uh, looks to how do I word this or looks to empty badger spot. <laughs> I'll oh, do you often up. do you often see badgers where there are none? 
Y ya chivas. <risa> It sounds more mystical than it is. Yeah, um, the obnoxious stench of soap. <laughs> oh, dear. It smells like a fresh summer breeze. It does. Anything else? The bastards. Uh, uh, <laughs> the church suddenly has no food. The church. Well, we did have something for you, but now we don't. Certainly. I'd like to add a cob quote. Yeah. And I might have had something to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Man, that's something to do with it. Uh, anything else, Callum? <laughs> I think that's it for me. Fair, fair. Benji, did you have any additional highlights? I think that's okay. I'm trying to think some more, but no, it's, it's okay. I think we're done with that. Yeah, I, I feel like that was that covered everything basically, or most things at the very least. Jesus Christ, what a not how I saw that session going. No, I, I don't uh, think anyone saw us going that way. I, I had so many. Well, I had so many. I had several other plot hooks set up for the record. It was supposed to go any other direction than that, and then that. <laughs> Twice. I don't fucking know. Old, Old Cobb is rapidly becoming one of my favorite characters <laughs> if I have ever played. It's because just... he plays the same way you play your standard CK2 characters. That is, I oh, think, why. You just, you've just got to lather on an extra layer of sleaze at every <laughs> gunshot. God damn it. <laughs> what would I do if I was sleazy? Ah, but what if I was worse? <laughs> <laughs> fucking. So we got one Setite Embracey, one La Sombra Embracey, one Gangrel Embracey, uh, and then Bert, who dies, but at least his soul is clean. Nita, <laughs> I should be gaining additional humanity somewhere along the lines. I mean, arguably, actually. Yeah, you know what? Taking I think that's, from, that's the, from the rest of us. <laughs> entirely reasonable. You have been acting with humility and, and rec uh, good recourse and generally demonstrated that the fact that you take lives has taught you not to do it flippantly and to value what it exists. Gain gain a point of humanity for consistent uh, representation on that front. Excellent. I don't know what that actually... If there's any mechanical benefit to that at all, but uh, um, I'll take it. 99% of the time, no. Not not for a regular human. No, I didn't. I didn't think it was. But uh, no, I'll take it just for the, the, the edging towards local sainthood. Hmm. Uh, cool. Any final words for the recording? Oh wait, no. Uh, yeah, no. Any? I, I forgot my fucking procedure order here. Fuck it. Any final words for, uh, words for the recording? And I might have something to do with it. <laughs> <laughs>